to serve. Association Spring Invitational 2021 for League of Legends. We are starting off with the B-side match uh, between Glenn Lawn and J.H. Bruns. My name is Wes Rambo. I'm joined by Mark here. How are oh, you doing, Mark? I'm doing good. I'm so excited for these games. Oh, man. High school esports is just such an amazing thing that's just starting to pick up, you know, all over North America. And mm. this is an amazing example of it. We're here. Uh, just, yeah, coming in with some amazing League of Legends. We got two best of threes today. We are starting off with this one on the B side, and then after that, we're going to be moving over to the other stream with Windsor Park versus Kildonan East. So, uh, yeah, we got a best of three coming up, Mark. Um, I think we're going to get into Champion Select right away, but what are you expecting from these two teams? Honestly, with these skill levels, it's like an even match. So mm -hmm. we, we can see like some great ganks, some great invades, and some great uh, callouts call from each team. Awesome, and we are uh, a little bit behind on which positions these characters are going to be, or these uh, players are going to be playing, so mm -hmm. that's what we're going to be finding out soon, going down the lineups as we wait for a, the uh, champ select to begin, and I think you can let them know that we're ready to go, but yep. going down the lineups uh, over on the side of, this is Glenn Lawn on Team 1, is that right? Yes, that is correct. Glenn, Glenn Lawn will have the blue side, and JH Bruns will have their red side. On uh, Glenlon, it's going to be Katie Raz, Grazd, Mizuya, Toxic Lady, and Lejunuo. We're going to go with the, for the pronunciation of that one. Uh, over on JH Bruns, it is Patrick Starr, Cheesy Legends, Jax Jabs, 3210, and Alien 516. So here we are into Champ Select. And yeah, like you said, it's Glenlon over on the blue side. And, you know, there's a couple of champions that are pretty highly prioritized mm -hmm. right now. but. Uh, it all comes down to comfort picks when you're playing at this level, I think. So the first ban we have is Darius in the top lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Darius, definitely uh, a good champion to ban out, especially around this rank. We're talking pretty, you know, uh, much mid rank here, lots of golds and silvers in this game. So definitely Darius, very, very strong at that elo. Uh, also, it was Kha'Zix banned mm -hmm. out on the other mm -hmm. side. That's going to be JH Brun's first ban targeting the jungler. Akali coming out as well. And uh, Glenlon focusing on those solo lanes here. And now we have a Kaisa ban, which is like, uh, Kaisa is a really good team fighter uh, champion right now. So like, you can go with any support lane, has a hard engage, and as well. Yeah, Kaisa definitely very, very strong in that bot lane carry position here. So the last ban for Glenlon, and then we're going to get into those picks here. Jin comes out, so an, a bot lane ban coming in. Jin, of course, another very strong AD carry. It once again can be paired with those early bullying supports to try to take out that lane very early on. And Yasuo is the final mm -hmm. ban coming in from J.H. Bruns here. So uh, finally we do get to see in this blue side pick number one, always mm -hmm. important. It looks like a, a top lane hover potentially. There's Jax uh, coming in for KD Raz. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Jax blind pick, not that common. You often no. see it as a counter. Yeah, well like there's a lot of champions that can go against Jax, like a Renekton mm -hmm. or someone with like high poke like a gnar. Yep. So it's really like, I guess they're, it's a comfortable pick for them. Yep. And you know what, At, in these types of tournaments, I definitely prefer the comfort picks. Mm -hmm. I really like when players go for those champions that they're most comfortable with, the champions they know they can execute mm -hmm. on, even if, you know, maybe it's not the exact right thing in the meta. I still yeah. think it's the right choice. Yeah. And just like that, we do see a, a top lane matchup, Nasus coming in, which is not one of the, uh, mm -hmm. one exactly. of the, Common counters to Jax, yeah. definitely might be a countered by Jax, but very comfortable on Nasus there, and Yone coming in for the mid lane. Well, like like you said, Nasus isn't a comfort pick, but he's still super strong with that Q stacking. So I'm guessing uh, JH Brunch is looking for the late game. Yeah, absolutely. That is already indicated by both the Nasus and Yone picks, and it is team fighting focus over on the side of Glenlon here as Le both Leona and Lee Sin are picked up. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Lee Sin off stream yeah. is definitely a great playmaking jungler early on. And that pairs so well mm -hmm. with the likes of Leona. Well, right now in the meta, Lee Sin can be either a top lane, mid lane, or jungle. So yes. like, it can, like, I think this is a more of a flex pick right now. Because sure. we still don't know like if they still have a mid laner or if they want a different like jungler as well. Absolutely true, and of course Jax can flex out into that jungle if you really mm -hmm. need him to as well. I would expect Lee Sin in the jungle, but mm -hmm. uh, like you say, it is a flex. Now Ash is picked up, mm -hmm. solid AD carry, such a mm -hmm. good choice, very very easy to execute, and it's a really good idea to pair with these sort of late game scaling mm -hmm. carries, yeah. you know, just to make sure you shore up some of that early game mm -hmm. laning. 
And now we also see a Morgana ban, which I, I find it kind of weird they banned the Morgana because they are against a Leona bot lane. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Morgana ban is just as much potentially targeted at the jungle as right. it is at the uh, support position right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, expecting potentially that lease in flex. Morgana could be a good ban, but mm -hmm. Oriana and Dr. Mundo are banned out. Mm -hmm. That could, the Dr. Mundo's an interesting one. Mm -hmm. Potentially they were uh, doing some research and looked at some OPGGs. Uh, yeah. maybe, maybe a comfort pick for one of the opposing teams here. As well. Yeah. And there's Poppy coming in. Uh, over on the side of J.H. Bruns. So mm -hmm. that's an interesting one. Poppy likely going into the jungle here. And yeah. I've seen, this might be a little exciting, Mark, because yeah. I've seen some interesting Poppy builds lately. You can go mm -hmm. Lethality with Dark Harvest. Exactly. Kind of a burst Poppy. Uh, really, really fun mm -hmm. stuff to watch. Mm -hmm. But And also counters Lee Sin really well with, exactly. that, with that block of the dash. Oh, now we have the mid laner, which is Zed. Zed coming in, going up against that Yone, uh, definitely a skill matchup, but mm -hmm. Zed can bully it out early, and there we go, the team fighting focus continues with Samira finally locked in. Samira Leona is a deadly lane, exactly. but it's another champion that really has to watch out for that Poppy. Yeah. Uh, here comes the Lux coming in, this would be an interesting pick mm -hmm. into Samira because it does appear to be going into that support role. Mm -hmm. Well, like, as you know, Poppy can block dashes, which yes. it's not bad, like, I think James Bruns has a good uh, counter pick against this team right now because the, the Glamon has a full engage mm -hmm. hard in team but with JH Bronze they have a way to counter that and kite out their teams yeah absolutely so yeah you know we got to break these team down teams down a little bit we're going to go to a bit of a competitive integrity delay mm -hmm. and while we do we'll just chat a little bit mm -hmm. about yeah the different focuses of these teams especially with the lease in Leona it looks like Glenlon is just wanting to go all in. They really want those mid games. They're going to look to try to secure objectives early on, get leads in those lanes, mm -hmm. and try to make sure that they are able to, you know, just stop the snowball, stop the really late game scaling yeah. that can come in from this uh, this JH Bruns team. Yeah, JH Bruns' is, is main game plan is try to stay alive and keep that Gnosis fed, get Ash fed, and pretty much just scale out the entire team because Glenlon's team is. A little bit on the late game, but mostly yeah. focused on the team fights. Yeah, absolutely. Team fights are the name of the game. And uh, the other thing that we've got to look at is that these uh, these players are definitely taking a couple of skill matchups. And mm -hmm. so you're looking at, you know, there was a bit of rank discrepancies yeah. coming in. So maybe looking to certain players to really mm -hmm. kind of pop off. I know that Lick Juno uh, is one of the highest ranked players here over on this mm -hmm. Glenlon team, so no surprise putting him on a very, very high skill expression champion like mm -hmm. Samira going in trying to you know, win that bot lane early. On the other side, of course, you know, all eyes are going to be on the Yone, cheesy yeah. legends coming in uh, with that high scaling mm -hmm. duelist late game who it just feels like sort of scales to infinity, but of course mm -hmm. Speaking of scaling to infinity, Patrick Star on Nasus yeah. is the one is the one who's going to be truly late game scaling forever. Exactly, because Nasus like all you want to do in the top lane is mm -hmm. farm and farm and farm. They, they might the jungler at like three two one zero might just give up some farm just mm -hmm. for him to catch up if he's behind. Yeah, absolutely, and yeah, that's the, another thing you've got to look at with lanes like this when you know two compositions have come together where the lanes become so important. You've got to look at those junglers. Mm -hmm. Now that we see the picks, it's almost certain that Lee Sin is going into the jungle. Mm -hmm. Of course, it could be a Jax mm -hmm. going in there, but uh, probably the Lee Sin, which I think would be the right call yeah. because uh, it's all about that synergy between, in particular, mm -hmm. in this matchup, the bot lanes and the junglers. You mm -hmm. need to find ways to get your pathing efficient, make sure you're tracking the other jungler, make mm -hmm. sure you're getting your gank timings right so that you can get your bot lane ahead because both of these bot lanes have a huge go button. With Leona, with Glenlon, it's that ultimate coming in from mm -hmm. Leona to get, get that engage when she is able to stack that CC. On the other side for JH Bruns, it's Ash just hitting that mm -hmm. R button and then you can stack up those Lux uh, bindings, mm -hmm. you can stack up all that damage and if you have you know, a Poppy coming in and mm -hmm. doing some burst damage as well from the jungle, that's going to be a deadly combo. So I'm looking for that bot mm -hmm. lane to be really, really volatile. We'll have to stay trained yeah. on that. And you also have to keep an eye on the summoner spells as well, because at, once Ash is like, this, her flash, or mm -hmm. if she runs cleanse, yes. she's pretty much vulnerable after that. Yep. And by the way, I think she should run cleanse. It's mm -hmm. always, it's, it depends, you know, cleanse is a little harder to execute than mm -hmm. heal, but I think that cleanse is ideal into this. 
even just the Leona would be justification enough to take the yeah. cleanse. And of course, you have the Jax as well. So that's yeah. something to look out for. Another thing to look out for in particular with Jax is these teleport flanks. Mm -hmm. We are expecting a teleport from the top lane Jax. Mm -hmm. And you're going to look for the other team to be pushed in to maybe overextend a little bit with deep wards behind you. And then you get that Jax coming in with an AoE stun from behind. Totally turns the face of the game. Exactly. And it's like, it's a more of a he says, she says type of moment. Sure. Like with... With Glenbond's team, they want to engage. Yep. But does JH Bruns want to fight those, or do they want to wait for the late game so yep. they get, get fed? Yeah. If these lanes go even, or even if uh, JH Bruns gets only a little bit behind, they've got them exactly where they want them because mm -hmm. JH Bruns is going to be so so deadly in those late game situations with the NASA split pushing, with Yone being able to one v one anybody. They've got to act early, Glenlon, and they've got to make sure they stop that from happening. So that's going to be the you know the most important thing. We are about to load into the game, and uh, yeah, we'll see we'll see what happens here. Like you said, it's anybody's game. These two teams are pretty even in skill level. We saw the ranks down at the top uh, when we first started, and we saw that pretty even here. And we're gonna just check and make sure the uh, summoner spells are what we want. Uh, something that catches my eye right off the bat, Mark, is Grosdon Leona has gone teleport with exhaust. I have no idea what's going on there. Yeah, because like, if you want Leona as a hard engager, you want that flash. And you want to flash an E and then stun the Ash right away. So this is a very odd pick, but yeah. it, it kind of makes sense with a poke comp against sure. Lux and an Ash. Yeah, I mean, the exhaust definitely makes sense. I, the flash is, is shocking to me, but yeah. who knows? Maybe Grozd has something up their sleeve that's going to uh, help them turn the tides. On the other side, we do see Mizuya has gone on to Lee Sin. That's going to go into the jungle. Jax, I talked about the teleport flank, but Katie Raz is looking for the lane dominance, mm -hmm. having gone with Ignite instead of... Uh, teleport there, so that's going to be Jax up against Nasus, and yeah, you know, you put a lot, KD Raz has put a lot of pressure on themselves to really win that lane, because without Teleport in the late game, you're already going to be struggling against yeah. the Nasus just because of the scaling. Now without Teleport, you put yourself in even tougher of a position. The, I guess he wants to win the early game, that's yes. why. Yeah. If the like, Nasus falls way too far behind, then it's going to be really hard to scale up for Patrick Starr. Yeah, absolutely. So we do have Poppy... Uh, on the Dark Harvest, as I was predicting there, and that's definitely an interesting one, man. It's not the not the type of assassin you exactly expect, Poppy, but mm -hmm. you do expect something along the lines of maybe you can either you can do Prowler's Claw or Stride Breaker, get that mobility going, mm -hmm. and you just are doing so much burst damage. It's really shocking what can happen with mm -hmm. you know a t you think it's a tank coming out of you at the jungle, and then suddenly they've taken away half your HP before exactly. you even realize what's going on. We're just waiting for it to start up. Yeah, 99%, and we are ready to go. The B side finals coming in here between Glenlon and JH Bruns in a best of three. So that's another thing we've got to talk about is, is we do have a best of three, and so you never know, you know, what these teams might have planned for a series. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're trying to feel each other out in the first mm -hmm. game. I'm not sure, you know, how much these two teams have played each other or how much these players have played with each other, but. Um, yeah, that's definitely going to be an interesting one to see you know, how these two teams use the format of a best of three in order to really try to, you know, just just get advantages over each other, learn about each other's draft strategies, and make sure that they get the most efficient and most advantageous situations for themselves going into the game. Exactly. And they can see which, com which team they're, like, if someone gets fed, they can ban out the next champion as well. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so we will see exactly... Uh, what they decide for champ select coming into this best of three and we're going to see uh, how these two teams stack up here. So we do have just pretty standard start so far. It looks like probably no, uh, no weird invade stuff happening here. I'm just on my screen switching my uh, characters around so we've got everybody in the right positions. And already a ward placed down there. We'll see if they take the recall. No, that wasn't Mizuya using the ward so no recall going to happen. Mm -hmm. There, but uh, yeah, we will see kind of the setups. It looks like both junglers want to be starting in that bot side. Uh, no shenanigans here, just honest early game League of Legends. And I think in the early game, and uh, maybe I'm biased because I'm a jungler, but I think the early game is all about those junglers. I think you've really got to be tracking those. And, you know, the first gank can change everything. As well as the first scuttle. Because like, yes. a lot of people uh, focus on the top side scuttle as a jungler. Because like, if you're on both sides, the blue side always starts with red, and 
the red side always starts with a blue buff. So, yes. and then they will meet in the scuttle in the first round. Yeah, and that scuttle is such an important objective. I'm glad you pointed it out because it's just so, so critical to you know, keep an eye on. Uh, the thing about these two junglers, there aren't any, you know, we've got a meta where there are a lot of power farming junglers coming in, and uh, neither of these junglers fit the bill for that. Uh, both of them are very, very focused on fighting. Neither of them have a particularly fast clear along the lines of Olaf or Udyr, you know, some of these other junglers we see in the meta right now. So, yeah, expect those fights and expect that scuttle crab to be highly contested early on. And that's why you've got to watch what happens in these lanes early on. Who gets the priority so that they can rotate and help their jungler uh, out with that scuttle crab. Exactly. So far early on, we don't see uh, too much action here. And uh, you guys might be looking for a fight here. Patrick Starr takes a bit, but just going to back up. As you mentioned, like, who, like, if you want to prioritize the scuttle, do you want both of your laners to come and help you? Or do you want just one? Yeah, it all depends on those matchups, right? In this situation, if I'm Mizuya over on the side of Glenlon, I'm definitely going to be looking to my laners to get priority. It's exactly what Katie Raz is trying to do here. Pops the ignite, the flash comes in from Patrick Star. Katie Raz is going to be satisfied with just blowing that very important summoner spell, and this is just what you want. It's okay if you don't get the kill because now, just like you asked, that is that Jax is going to be available to come down and help with the scuttle once Lee Sin gets around there. You can see though, uh, the clear is much you know better for three two one zero over on the poppy. Definitely doing a better job of clearing and uh, getting a little ahead there. You're gonna also have to look in the bot lane too, just because they bot lane is such a like with that Leona and Samira, they're gonna try and find a pick off the Ash or the Lux. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, both of those. Lanes, like we mentioned before, just with a go button. Katie Raz continuing to put the damage down so much on Patrick Star, but I like what Katie Raz is doing. He's playing it very safe, putting down that engage. But look at this an early roam from Cheesy Legends is on the way. Katie Raz does have the flash available. Cheesy Legends needs to hit this Q knock up, looking for it. There's the flash coming in. Cheesy Legends want to use the E to catch up, but doesn't manage to find anything else. Nice work there by Katie Raz. Now we have a fight on the scuttle, and even though the mid laners were there to help, there's the flash coming in, but oh, Mizuya misses by just an inch. And 3210 gets the scuttle crab, does get out, used the flash, but there you go, so did Mizuya. Yeah. So that's definitely an advantage gained for JH Bruns. Now, Mizuya is looking for the bottom, scu bottom scuttle because he lost the first scuttle yep. in the war. Yeah, absolutely, and knowing 3210, probably not interested in that one. Yeah, you see, this is a nice, sneaky little play there from 3210. Even though his opponent's lane's had priority, he is still the one who is able to get that scuttle crab to get that objective. Very, very impressive stuff there from 3210. Uh, and they do have a little bit of a gold lead, not only because of that, but because of a couple of small farm leads in the bottom top lane. Yeah. As you can expect, the Ash is winning the CS lead because the Ash has like so much more poke. Yeah. And with the Lux support, they have a lot of folks, so they're poking out that mirror yep. in the bot lane. Yeah, exactly what that lane is designed to do over here. So you can see they're just biding their time. You've just kind of got to wait for maybe an item or two and wait for that Leona to hit level six so that you can get that engage in. You can go in earlier if you've got some jungle support, but for now, you know, it looks like they're playing a little bit cautiously. Generally, you know, Glenlon does seem to be a pretty Slow-paced team, pretty cautious, but remember, we already talked about this, they do need to pull that trigger at some point. They can't just let these lanes stay even, because that is death for them, mm -hmm. considering the composition of uh, J.H. Bruns over here. With J.H. Bruns, it's like, I'm looking at the Nasus stacking right now. He is at 57 stacks as of right now, and it's only five minutes in. Yeah, not bad at all. Definitely being able to stay even, even though we saw KD Raz putting down some harassment, definitely gaining an advantage in that lane. Uh, still, Patrick Starr has been able to get those stacks rolling, so that's going to be a very valuable thing to watch out for. Uh, Zuya also looking for a gank and actually uses the war jump, but uh, Patrick Starr is walking away and Katie Raz doesn't look interested in that gank at all. I'm not sure if maybe there was a connection issue there because, yeah, it looks like maybe Katie Raz uh, has a bit of a lag situation here, unfortunately, so hopefully that gets resolved. But in any case, you see Toxic Lady looking for some damage onto Cheesy Legends. A bit of a farm lead here because Cheesy Legends has been roaming. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, Katie Raz does appear to be disconnected or uh, otherwise unable to um, you know, move the character around. So hopefully that gets resolved pretty soon. There's the recall coming in, so hope to see everything get okay with that. But unfortunately, it does mean Patrick Starr is going to be 
getting a lot of stacks for free on that Nasus. It's the opposite of what you want. The engage coming in though. Toxic Lady looking for damage. Cheesy Legends goes down. First Blood finally coming in. And just as it happens, we have a pause, probably to sort out Katie Raz's issues yeah. in the top lane. Unfortunately, it is League of Legends. Sometimes you have connection issues. Mm. It's like, it's every yep. day. Like. Yep, especially playing online. It always is has a chance of happening. We saw in the chat, they're just pausing to wait for her to get back. So, Katie Raz is going to probably reconnect. Maybe start the client. These types of things have to happen. But it didn't affect that mid lane kill mark. No, Toxic no. Lady, great work there. Punishing Cheesy Legends for an overextend using that Ignite and not even having to expend the flash or anything. Just knowing exactly what damage uh, they had. Very, very, um, very impressive there from Toxic Lady. And the first blood goes down. So you can see a little bit of a gold lead. We still, you know, that getting that first scuttle, getting the uh, Poppy and Nasus ahead in CS. They still do manage to stay uh, pretty even in gold, but that first blood definitely going to work. And if there's one thing you don't want here for the side of JH Bruns, it's a snowballing Zed. Mm -hmm. That's going to be deadly for your squishy champions. Now, if you're in the situation as Cheesy Legends, what, what mythic item would you want to go? I think you, it has to be Shield Bow against this mm -hmm. team. Yeah, you know, there's, there are some options for Yone, but I think Shield Bow is the only one when you're facing a Zed who's already shown that they're able to punish you for those overextends, able to take advantage mm -hmm. of your squishiness early. You've also got, of course, uh, the likes of Lee Sin and Samira with that mm -hmm. early burst. Yeah. It's just, you know, Shield Bow is just perfect against everything mm -hmm. they've got here. But uh, now, as we see as the late game goes on, mm -hmm. Patrick Starr is already farming up that big, big stacks on Nasus, which we like to see. But yes. if you're Glenlon, it's kind of scary as well. Very scary, yeah. You're going to have to find a way to deal with it. And unfortunately, the thing is, even though they do have the jacks, they just simply don't exactly have a champion that's designed to deal mm -hmm. with a really late game scaling, tanky, you know, beefy dog like Nasus was mm -hmm. going to become. Even their AD carry, the Samira, just not really able to get that percent health damage in her build mm -hmm. with the items she needs. And so you've just got to make sure that you are figuring out other ways to get advantages because, yeah, that Nasus, you know, it, it's going to be a big problem. Of course, even a Fed Zed isn't doing much mm -hmm. up against, you know, an, a Nasus who's going to be definitely stacking some armor here. It's a full AD composition, something we haven't really mentioned yet yeah. on the side of uh, Glenlon, but they have drafted all AD. They don't have a single tick of magic damage in their mm -hmm. entire kit, uh, in their entire champion pool. And mm -hmm. so that means that the likes of, you know, Nasus mostly, because Nasus is actually the only real tank, but Nasus can just fully stack armor, doesn't need to build any mm -hmm. magic resist at all, and is going to be dominating those late game fights. So then, like, Glenlon has to build Grievous Wounds, because mm -hmm. even though Nasus does build tank, and they does like have enough tankiness in yep. him, he will still gain health no matter what from mm -hmm. every basic attack with that Grasp of, of Undying and his passive as well. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, you know, you need Grievous Wounds for Yone anyway, right? Yeah. Uh, with that Shield Bow, that's almost certainly going to come in with Yone's innate mm -hmm. healing. You need those Grievous Wounds. You also need to sneak in Armor Penetration, of course, because you know against a full AD team, you, you, their team's going to be yielding armor. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's going to be a very interesting one. And Glenlon, as far as I can see, already have an uphill battle to climb mm -hmm. here with, uh, you know, the, what they've got to get done in the next few minutes of the game. They mm -hmm. really are on a clock here. And, uh, you know, Toxic Lady already starting off with a great solo kill in mid lane, mm -hmm. getting a farm lead here. You can see, actually, with the lane, uh, you know, setups here on the screen, you can see that Toxic Lady's got another wave coming in. And, you know, since we got a pause, I get to be a nerd about waves here, Mark. I get to talk about wave control, which is so important in League of Legends. Toxic Lady needs to see this wave that's about to come in, push that in. 15 seconds left on Cheesy Legends respawn timer. And so Toxic Lady needs to get that wave pushed in, get the current wave that Toxic Lady's got in the mid lane to crash into the lane. So that means they're going to get even more of a farm lead, get even more of an advantage, and get priority in the mid lane so that... Toxic Lady is able to roam over to the side lanes and really get those lanes punished for not mm. having priority. F maybe set up a dive with Samira and Leona and Lee Sin, of course. You know, there are definitely ways into this game for Glenlon, but it's a very difficult comp to execute, you know, compared to that scaling, just wait and fight front to back type of thing that mm. JH Bruns have got going on. Of course. Now with it's a very going to be an objective matchup as well, because the, the first dragon we have is the Ocean Dragon, yep. which a lot of teams would love to have. Yeah, absolutely. Ocean is definitely one of the strongest dragons early on 
you know, in addition to Mountain, one of the strongest individual dragons, but it also means that there's no Ocean Soul in this game, mm. which is a big deal, especially because you've got the likes of uh, Yone and Nasus, who absolutely benefit so much from that Ocean Soul. Exactly. That's not going to happen. Star though, looking for a plate, getting a bunch of gold up, and Katie Raz definitely, you know, has sort of relinquished her lead a little bit up there, unfortunately, because of the DC, but still, Jax has a lot of potential to take down this Nasus, and you've got to do it pretty soon. You've got to maybe try to bait out that ultimate from the Nasus and try to get a kill down there, maybe stop the snowball, stop the stacks from coming in so easily a little bit, mm -hmm. and uh, see what they can do. But Toxic Lady is definitely the shining light over here. 54 to 42 CS from the Zed and Yone. I don't really much really play Yone because I find him really hard. Yeah. I, I respect Yone playing a yeah, lot. Yeah. But if Yone gets behind, he still has a chance to catch up, which is kind of crazy to me. Yeah, absolutely. He's just one of those champions where you can just kind of wait and see exactly kind of what the game is shaping up like and just make sure you've got that uh, Make sure you've got that scaling and make sure you just, you know, don't feed and then you're all good. Yeah. Uh, we are just getting into another pause here. Unfortunately, that ping did spike back up for Katie Raz. So just waiting to get that sorted out here and then we'll be right back into the game. Getting a little bit of, uh, getting a little bit of production stuff set up as well. But uh, yeah, you know, once again, if you're just joining us, this is the Manitoba High School Esports Association Spring Invitational 2021. This is the B-side finals between Glenlawn Collegiate and J.H. Bruns Collegiate. So that's going to be the, uh, that's going to be, you know, the best of three that we're about to see unfold before us here with, uh, yeah, these two teams kind of fighting for glory here. After that, we are going to go for uh, the A-side championships, which is Windsor Park up against Kildonan East here. Uh, so we will see. Oh, uh, yeah, and yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly sure uh, what the problem is here. It just looks like maybe Katie Raz has an issue over on her end. So, yeah, not sure exactly what we can do about it yet besides just kind of wait it out and see if she can get... Um, to see if she can get back online here. And yet yeah, they are troubleshooting over here. Apparently her ping went up over 6,000. So uh, uh, suffice to say, uh, a lot of players would say even 100 is unplayable. So 6,000, exactly. definitely not happening. Yeah, like a lot of players want like that nice FPS, like that 100 FPS frames per second, mm -hmm. because you want to see the macros. You yep. want to hit your skill shots as well. Yep. Yeah, and you know that ping, of course, really putting this into perspective as well. Uh, it definitely, definitely affects things. So mm -hmm. we will wait it out. And we'll continue to see exactly what can be happening. And, you know, Katie Raz was doing fine early on. Clearly, there wasn't a ping issue early on in the game when she was able to bully that uh, Nasus out. But, yeah, just, you know, it just happens sometimes. This is the online, mm -hmm. uh, this is the online story for esports events occasionally. So we will, uh, you know, we will keep you posted on that. And we'll, we'll keep seeing, you know, what kind, of, uh, what kind of info we can give over to you. I'll start sorting through my notes here just to maybe give a little bit of a background on these two teams because uh, you know, we do have uh, some very kindly put together mm -hmm. notes for us. And uh, yeah, they, we, the, the, some of the info I've got in front of me is really great because we, uh, it looks like they got a quote from everybody uh, in the, in the uh, uh, tournament here. For instance, um, Toxic Lady has... Uh, her quote, have fun, don't tilt. Definitely, uh, definitely words uh, of wisdom. On the other side, it's Lick Juno, who with, uh, I hope I can win this match. So that's pretty, uh, pretty broad there. Yeah. Pretty easy to, um, yeah. easy to apply to any situation, actually. Exactly. And if you're looking at the, like, the years of being played, I feel like I'm, I've, I've been playing since like season two. Sure. And these guys have just started playing like just last year. Yeah. So from that perspective, and growing now. League of Legends is still a growing community game. Mm -hmm. It totally is, yeah. And, you know, I'm impressed at some of these ranks, you know, even getting yourself up to a point where you can get, you know, into those silver and gold rankings mm -hmm. after only having played for a little while, you know, it just gets more competitive all the time. So yeah. it's, it's impressive. And, you know, these players are really, you know, really starting off their esports journey wherever it leads them. It's, uh, it's an amazing thing to see these types mm -hmm. of events. And, you know, we're just waiting for kind of who comes out as the sort of star players, the shining lights yeah. of each team, and, you know, maybe move on to other, you know, local tournaments, continuing to try to improve themselves as competitors and, you know, make, them, make themselves into, you know, 
make themselves into a competitive uh, person and getting into competitive sports when you know maybe traditional sports aren't as easily accessible right now. Esports is a great way to kind of fill that competitive edge uh, that some people really have. Yeah, especially like during these times now, mm -hmm. because of the restrictions we're facing right now in Winnipeg, it's really hard to go out and actually play sports. Now yeah. a lot of people are switching over to the esports scene because they can play it yeah. at home. Yeah. And they still can play with their friends no matter what. Yeah, exactly. Um, I personally am uh, I'm here as a guest from the Manitoba Esports Association, so I can definitely shout all that out. Uh, you know, you can hit us up, and if you are kind of in, interested in this, but maybe you're not in high school or you're a high school competitor wanting to get more under your belt, the Manitoba Esports Association is available. I'll uh, just do that quick plug there and not get too much into it, but uh, hit us up. And yeah, uh, you know, some of these players, you know, if you continue to be interested in League of Legends, I definitely do expect to see them, you know, getting into that kind of tournament, and it's just a really... And uh, it looks like we are going to take just a quick break while we get these tech issues sorted out. And then once we do manage to get everybody back in and on a stable ping, we will be right back with you. So thanks, everybody, for bearing with us, and we will see you.
Welcome back. Sorry about that. Just a little bit of technical difficulties and uh, looks like we do have it resolved. So we are back into the game. If you're just joining us, this is Glen Lawn versus J.H. Bruns in the B-side finals at the Spring Invitational for the Manitoba High School Esports Association. And we had a bit of connection issues with Katie Raz, but it looks like she is back online. Unfortunately, that means Patrick Starr has gotten a significant advantage in lane while we were away. So Patrick Starr having gotten two kills and the first turret and uh, it's 314 so he got all five plates up there mark and that is definitely not what uh, glenlon is wanting for this but a a uh, the yone goes in pardon me i just lost the ability to talk for a moment there patrick star got a kill up there but the engage from cheesy legends did not pay off he went down to the kill down in bot lane all right, yeah. While we had the replay going, we saw another kill down there, and it's definitely heating up here in this game. Just as we get back in, both teams kind of pulling the trigger here. Mizuya went down, but also took down Alien in the bot lane. There was a nice ult set up by Grozd here. So that's three to four. The dragon is available. Ocean Soul or Ocean Dragon was taken over by the side of J.H. Uh, Bruns, but the Infernal Dragon now available. That means we're going to have a Cloud or a Mountain Soul coming in here. Still not a significant gold lead, just a thousand gold, but a lot of it is on this Nasus, and that is very, very dangerous. We already talked a lot about this scaling, but there's just, you know, it can decide the entire game. It's worth really getting into here. Graz, dodging up there. And uh, yeah, now we have Mark back as well. Thanks, thanks again for joining me, man. <laughs> no worries about it. As we look back into the Gnosis, Gnosis is, has a 350 gold bounty on it. Mm -hmm. And right now he has 348 stacks with the five plates. So he is really fed right now. Hugely fed, but so is Toxic Lady going for Cheesy Legends, killing Spree there and didn't even have to use the ultimate, but there is Nasus coming in. Looking for revenge. Toxic Lady going to get out of that one, and looks like they are going to go for the dragon, but Jage Bruns is collapsing. Will they decide to contest? It looks like Nasus is backing off. We have another pause coming in. Katie Raz still continued to struggle, but take a look at the game state right here. And uh, yeah, this could be a bit dangerous here as the dragon is being looked at right now. It's uh, going to be the uh, it's going to be the uh, Glenlon grouping up around that dragon well there was potential for a contest there I'm just not exactly sure if they wanted to go for it because we did see uh, uh, the NASA's hesitate in the mid lane there exactly right now we see the both carry between to toxic lady and Patrick Stark mm -hmm. which is I'd rather have a fed Gnosis than a fed Zed, but the problem is Zed can kill that Ash super quickly mm -hmm. without, with a blink of an eye yeah. before and, the yeah. J.H. Brunch team can find a way to set them up. Yeah, Nasus needs to get considerably fed before he's in sort of that 1v5 position, right? Exactly. You know, And so if you can get that Zed online burning up the Yone and the Ash, then there's not a lot of damage left besides kind of that Nasus, and so if you can kite him away with the likes of Samira and Leona, then there definitely could be an entrance back into this, as we do see a bit of a gold lead has been gained, though, still, and kind of maintained over by a J.H. Bruns there. Four to four in kills. Dragon, like you said, if you look at the sort of the map, mini-map right now, you do see the bot lane sort of posturing, both bot lanes sort of posturing towards the Dragon Pit, but... Uh, Nothing much more to look at there, as you know, it's it's hard to tell exactly what J.H. Bruns was planning in terms of contesting that uh, contesting that dragon. As we can see, Ash already has completed her first item, which is a Kraken Slayer, which is a, not a bad pick between a Jax and a, a Lee Sin and a Leona, which is going to shred their yeah. armor completely. I agree. You know, I think that if it were me, I would have gone with a shield bow or a gale force on Ash instead. I think that you're more concerned with trying to a avoid dying than you are with trying to do as much damage as possible. You've already got a Yone scaling up into the late game. I would go for survivability here because you know you're going to be have a target on your back with that Zed and Lee Sin. But you know, the Kraken Slayer definitely is useful uh, as far as you scale, and you know that's what JH Bruns is going for. They're going for the scaling, so. Kraken Slayer definitely all right with that one. It also does give that attack speed, and that's so useful on Ash to continue those on-hit slows. Exactly. But it, 
you never know with these type of games. League of Legends is a back and forth, heads or tails type of movement. Sure. Yep. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, we will see when this game gets unpaused here. Still waiting for Katie Raz to wait that out. And while we do that, we're just going to take a quick break once again just to make sure everybody's as uh, set up as they possibly can be. So, sorry about the delay, folks. It uh, does happen sometimes with Online League, and we will see you back here in just a few minutes.
All right, and I... Welcome back to the Manitoba High School Esports Association. I'm just going to turn the volume down on uh, what I've got in front of me because it's my voice and I don't want that. Uh, but we do have these two teams. Um, definitely this game has been a little back and forth, you know, because of uh, uh, all the stuff that's been happening. So while I try to find this mark, uh, let's see, let's break down what we've been seeing so far. So right now we saw that Glenlon got the puck. Uh, the Fire Dragon right now. So it was a nice objective steal from Mizuya. And now that we have seen a fight in the bot lane, while we go back into it while we were AFK. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about here as you do see Glenlon and we talked about them having to pull the trigger. Well, that's exactly what they're trying to do right now. They're almost back to even in gold, just about a thousand, not quite a thousand behind. There's the dive coming in. Jax Jabs goes down. Lixunuo with the hero play coming in for the tower dive. And Toxic Lady couldn't finish it off. The Samira is there to clean it up. Yeah. So even more kills coming through. Easy Legends with the ultimate coming in. He missed, yeah. he missed it. Yeah, and missed it. And so there we go. Mizuya took him down. Now that now we see that Glenlon is ahead in kills and in gold. They're still, but they are still tied in gold because of that Nasus power farming through the top lane and grabbing the mid lane turret as well. Absolutely. There we go. And you can see that interaction between Poppy uh, and Lee Sin there. That's exactly what we were talking about before. Poppy countering a lot of these players. And, uh, 3 2 one zero. Able to get out of there, no problem. And you can see here, 500 gold difference now between these two teams. It's so close. Yeah. And uh, they are so able to, you know, bring it back from this. Even with KD Raz falling behind because of some connection issues, mm -hmm. still, Glenlon uh, have more gas left in the tank. Exactly. Now that Lee Sin and the Zed is fed, which is kind of scary, for that Ash, because they're gonna, they're going to be on him right off the yeah. gate in every team fight. Yeah, absolutely. Jax Jabs already feeling the heat a little bit there, and nobody's feeling the heat more than Cheesy Legends on the Yone. Now that scaling is still available, but the more they're able to take down Cheesy Legends, the more they invalidate him as a player in this game up until the late game when the uh, Mythics start to come through, the more Glenlon get a chance to use this full AD, full team fight, mid-game skirmish type composition to really continue to build advantages and control the map and try to close this one out before Nasus and Yone hit critical mass. Now we know, now we do know what Dragon Soul will be coming up. It will be the Wind Drake, mm -hmm. the Cloud Drake, and then the Cloud Drake is probably one of the the weakest dragons out there for the soul. But with the Ash ultimate mm -hmm. and the Yoni ultimate, it's gonna be, you're gonna see ultimates flying left and right all the yeah. time. Absolutely, and of course, getting that burst of speed after you use your ultimate. Uh, who's a champion in this game who benefits a lot from that, Mark? That's right, Nasus does a lot of work with that Cloud uh, Soul. So yeah, like you say, one of the weakest souls, but on certain champions, for instance, Nasus and uh, Samira, it is pretty huge. The ultimate comes through. That is a catch onto Alien, but there was nobody quite ready to follow up Grazd. Still making a lot happen here with this uh, Leona, even though there's no flash on that Leona. Yeah. Some impressive stuff there. They did but burn the Lux Summer as well, so they'll yes. probably be looking for another gank in the bot lane to get that Samir and the Leona fed. Absolutely. So Graz continuing to try to get those, uh, try to get Leona going here, trying to get that engaged. And Keep starting those fights, you just want to keep fighting. You see the actually the Eclipse has been finished by Toxic Lady, an interesting one there. You often do see the Dusk Blade, but Eclipse going for this time as well. It's the Gore Drinker, pretty standard over on Lee Sin. And of course, Immortal Shield Bow. I've got a couple of friends I play with who like to mess around on Samira, do some weird little mythics like Kraken Slayer or Gale Force, you know, these types of things. But I think Immortal Shield Bow pretty much reigns supreme. Exactly. Now, if you're if you're in Katie Raz's spot, what would you do in this situation, being DC'd and being so far behind the Nasus? Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, the Jax does have a little bit of power to scale. We know that Katie Raz has got some mechanical skill, was able to bully that Nasus out of lane early on, and so there are outplays available to her if she's able to execute properly, but you've got to really pick your battles right now. So what you're trying to do right now is Katie Raz is just find yourself in an open lane, get that farm up, maybe call for a jungler support, and, uh, you know, Take advantage of the fact that Patrick Star might be overcommitting a little bit. See if you can maybe find some sort of shutdown. But here we go, Toxic Lady getting caught here. Patrick Star using the Wither. 
And then using the AOE, not going to go for anything. There's Mizuya trying to scare him off a little bit. Changing the direction mid-jump, but the dragon has been claimed by J.H. Bruns, the second dragon, the Cloud Drake. Soul is still miles away for either team, so nothing too much to worry about that. And you can see the gold is just dead even right now. Exactly. And it was, I wouldn't send like all three of them up top just to stop one Yone, which was kind of a weird play. You don't see yeah. it often, but they did, they didn't get out of anything with it. They just lost the, the Cloud Drake. Yeah, exactly. Cloud Drake down here. We are waiting for the, uh, for, you know, for one of these teams to continue to try to make proactive plays. That's what I really like to see in sort of these types of collegiate or amateur competitions is proactive play, you know, try to do, you know, show that you've been limit testing, show that you really know your champion that you're playing and you're really able to push them to the limits, turn around those situations. That's something, you know, Katie Raz, we can tell she's experienced on the jacks. That's kind of the, the kind of thing that you can really get an advantage and try to stop the snowball of this Nasus right now. <laughs> Already though, you can see it's the Trinity Force as well as the Thorn Mail completed there. And there's the Warden's Mail coming in again. This Nasus <laughs> is almost unkillable by attack damage right now. It's so, so <laughs> difficult to come back from this. I honestly hate playing against like mm -hmm. a fed Nasus. Like, yep. no matter how much damage you do to yep. it, his team will still have time to back him up yep. with that such a hard sustainability and such a hard way to kill him. Oh man, and you're trying to get this outplays, but Toxic Lady might not be able to find this outplay. Does manage to get away. No stun going down. 3-2-1-0 doesn't quite have the angle. Toxic Lady got trying to get away, but Patrick Star with the flash. And that is a huge Nasus Q. You talked about the stacks already. Nasus just getting more with that flash coming in. And so Toxic Lady also gets shut down. And yeah, you know, it's really, uh, it, the, basically at this point, J.H. Bruns has to make a mistake mm -hmm. in order for Glenlon to come back from this. And that Nasus is just such a presence on the map. Exactly. He's been roaming from top, he's grabbing top lane farm, he's grabbing mid lane farm. He's also grabbing some jungle farm as well. As we can see here, he already has 597 stacks right now. Oh, Leona coming in with the ultimate. And there is Jax Jabs going Getting totally stunned, but nothing able to follow up there. Lichuno going for that. Going to flash in here. Looking for more. But not quite able to get anything there. And no summoners used either. So there's another tower going down to the Nasus. Zero coming in. Lichuno now doesn't have the W available. And Grost is going to go down as well. It's Jax Jabs coming in with a lot of that slow end damage from Ash. But it's zero. Coming in, 3-2-1-0 with the Poppy executing them. 7-7 seven to seven now, and the gold lead is starting to swing back into J.H. Bruns' favor. And uh, yeah, you know, it might be a slow, inevitable trudge toward the base at this point. It is so hard to come back from this. Exactly. They, they were burning a lot of some, like, Glenlon kind of overcommitted to that mm. ball lane a yep. little bit. Like once they burn, like once you burn your summers, like your, your ultimates, it's yep. time to back off, but they still decided to stay in and got decimated by the poppy gang and lost their bot lane tower. Yeah, and you know, Grazd has been hitting some great solar flares there on the Leona, but it just hasn't been quite the right timing. There you saw Lixuno not quite being able to get there in time and catch up with mm -hmm. the Leona engage. You really want to be coordinated on that. So something to work on there. But yeah, you know, the, the story of this game is that Nasus just completely taking over every part of the map here, getting towers in two different lanes already. And the Baron is available as well. We got Dragon coming up pretty soon. So GZ Legend's gonna try to go in. Remember this Yone isn't very fed. It does have to back off. There we go, the ultimate comes in. Toxic Lady looking for something, Cheesy Legends. Goes down, Toxic Lady with a great engage and now they have the Nasus. Oh no, do they? Are they trapped in here with him, or is he trapped in there with them as the kick has to come through? The ultimate sneaks in there, and it just goes right onto Graz. Unbelievable, threading the needle. Here's Katie Raz trying to get the three-person stun. Does get it, but is it going to be enough? There's no follow-up as the double kill coming in from Lux as well. Like Juno now, very much dead as well, and it's just Patrick Star barreling down. They had such a great situation, but that Nasus, well, he's way more than a match for three members of any Glenlon team right now. Right now, Nasus is like pretty much just one before that Look entire at this. team. Oh, man. <laughs> those cues. Yeah. Once Nasus gets those cues, man, it's just like he can Ooh. like 
take the towers like with two or three hits with those cues. Yeah, avert your eyes. You don't want to see something grimy because that is what those Nasus cues are doing to structures right now. And you can see just grabbing a couple of CS back along the way. So many stacks on that Nasus right now. Cloud Drake going down as well. And yeah, you know, I like the idea. I like the play coming in. It was unfortunate. Graz definitely put the solar flare in the wrong position in that fight. So uh, we definitely could have maybe turned the tides, but even so, with Nasus coming in, probably has that legend tenacity and definitely is very, very tanky. So even if that solar flare had hit, I'm just not sure that Glenlon has the damage anymore. Yeah, like you saw that. Like the Nasus pretty much won for the entire team. He mm. waited for his team to come and help him. Yeah. It took them like five minutes before, like almost five minutes before, before the, their uh, Jade Bronze came and helped them. Yep. And they came out with more, more or so an ace on that team. Yeah, exactly. Completely dominating that team fight. So the Cloud Soul Point is up. That's going to be the JH Bruns squad looking for that one. They are going to see if they can grab that Cloud Soul. We mentioned it can be very effective on Nasus, but also three Cloud Drakes. Definitely reducing that cooldown of the ultimate is very valuable, in particular on someone like an Ash, their main engage tool. Mm -hmm. Pardon me. So they are going to maybe look at this Baron for another... Um, Another objective to look at, they definitely have the team fight here, even with things like Leona, Samira, and Jax available to help them out. Toxic Lady gets caught, the ultimate coming in, and Cheesy Legends is on the board! That is the kill coming through. Finally, Toxic Lady gets caught out, and yeah, those desperation plays, man, it's just so, so tough to avoid this kind of thing. Yeah, it's really hard to come back to when, like, you're, like, Toxic Lady was playing fine in the mid lane, but they kept... Trying to, the Gnosis is just too scary, and mm -hmm. then the team is catching up with the late game comp coming up, right, as we can see it. Yeah, exactly. It's, you know, you gotta, need, you gotta have a little bit more than that on your side mm -hmm. if you want to take this game with a comp like that. And this is why I think that maybe, you know, at this point, Glenlon could be looking back to the draft. Maybe look at a little bit more of a damage profile, but at the same time, it's really, really hard to judge this one. You know, you don't want to put too much weight on this as KD Raz already was getting ahead and then we had that unfortunate connection issue. So if that hadn't happened, who knows what kind of pressure KD Raz might have been able to have on the map. So maybe they run it back. Maybe if, you know, the ping has sort of centered and everything is, you know, kind of all things are equal, maybe KD Raz takes over the game, and uh, we'll definitely see if that is what they choose to do next game. But for this game, though, that might be something that they are looking into. It's very unlikely they get a win here, so maybe you start using this as a little mini team meeting, right? Yeah. You know, try to talk about what can we do to improve this next game, how can we kind of deal with this, and make sure that we've got maybe a bit more of a split damage profile so mm -hmm. that we can't just get, you know, taken out by a Nasus building, uh, building something like a Thorn Mail and, and Warden's Mail and all these, all this armor. Mm -hmm. Gage Friends is just kind of like, I, I wouldn't say they ran away with this game, mm -hmm. it was just like, what yep. would have happened if one of the, their players got connection issues as yeah, well? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, hopefully we can return to that. Baron is available, and we'll see if JH Bruns feel they need it. You know, mm -hmm. you can talk about that as a way to secure the game, but you can also talk about that as an opportunity to throw. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. you just don't go for that objective and just try to continue pushing down these lanes using the Nasus to your advantage. But yep, Baron could be an objective you'd potentially go for. Uh, the inhibitor in mid lane is down, and so that's something they've got to deal with already on Glenlon, but it is giving farm to their carries. So if JH Bruns don't get a move on, they, they might catch up a little bit, and particularly you've got to watch out for that Jax. Here you go, you can see up in the top lane, there is Toxic Lady going for an engage. Easy Legends be doing a lot of damage now, but the ultimate comes in. Toxic Lady does this, get the kill. It does! Toxic Lady with the burst, and that is still a fed zed. It is scary to play, be in that situation mm -hmm. if you're a cheesy legend, because once that ultimates you, you're pretty much a goner after that point. Yeah. Patrick Starr, the goon squad coming in. Uh-oh, is he going to be able to get away? Toxic Lady tries to go for it. 51-0. Oh, Alien with the snipe from downtown, baby. Coming in with the kill. Patrick Starr doesn't quite get stunned by that solar flare, only gets slowed. A double kill. Alien is popping off in this game here with that Lux. And yeah, Katie Raz just has to try to go for a last ditch effort. But Patrick Starr doesn't even flinch. And that is going to do it, folks. It looks like J.H. Bruns will be able to use this wave to push down for the win. Though two of their players uh, are not so sure. Uh, here's the ultimate coming in. And yeah, Patrick Starr, he's just toying with them at this point. 
the ace coming through. They've lost their wave, and they also lost the inhibitor. And the death timers are a little awkward here, but this is likely going to be it for their team. That is the one and zero, and uh, it's taken a little while. I tried to send this game off with a bang, but we are going to wait until this Nasus uses that last cue. There it is, GG in the chat, and JH Bruns takes game one. Have to. Uh, we will get into game two in just a moment, Mark. I've got to what, what I've got to do. I'll give everybody a peek behind the curtain. I've got to get back into this lobby, so I'll uh, maybe get you added and then uh, make sure we can get in. And uh, I'll go to production, see if it's okay if we throw to a really quick break while we get a couple of things, a um, couple so of things sorted out.
right, welcome back everybody to the Manitoba High School Esports Association Spring Invitational. We have the B-side finals here between Glen Lawn and J.H. Bruns. And J.H. Bruns took the first game with a huge amount of scaling there and a little bit of an unlucky situation for Glen Lawn where they had a player having some connection issues. They have switched out. Katie Raz looks like they are going with actually two players uh, subbing in. Asian Boy and Casual coming in here uh, in place of a couple of those other players, so we'll see if uh, we we'll see if you know. Hopefully, everybody's connection stays the same. It's unfortunate because I was excited to see Katie Raz try to run it back there up against the opposing top laner, but still, we do see these two teams switching out a couple players, and we'll see if uh, that makes a difference in this next game. I think Glenlon's definitely got a chance, but they've got to look at their draft a little. Exactly. With JH runs, they kept their lead super so high up there. Mm -hmm. They got seven objectives, three dragons, while. Glenlon only had one dragon yep. in the entire game, which is unfortunate with the disconnection, yep. but you have to bounce back and learn from your past mistakes. Yeah, exactly. It's all about that mental game. Bouncing back from something like that is so important, and if they can do that, I think they can definitely take it to a game three mm -hmm. and see if they can really you know, bring this one back with the reverse sweep. You do already see the Nasus ban coming out. No surprise there. That Nasus was a complete menace. And we do indeed see Asian Boy in the top lane. We'll see what uh, he goes for in terms of you know trying to counter pick. Mm -hmm. See, it, we do see that um, since uh, Glenlon lost the first game, they do get side pick. Mm -hmm. So they've gone for blue side again. And uh, Katie Raz was the one who took the jacks. So mm -hmm. the prioritization of jacks not so important, obviously. But we'll see what they decide to prioritize here with that first pick. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just like uh, if you want the blue side, you want to grab that first pick strong item person. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the Jax was an odd pick for a first pick, yeah. but it's not a bad pick with, yeah. uh, as a blind pick. Yeah. yeah, it definitely is available for a flex. It's not the worst, but it, you do see it sometimes as a bit of a counter to mm -hmm. some champions. So not likely to see that one again. More so for these comfort picks, which we've mm -hmm. been asking for the entire time, right? These teams have got to go with what they're comfortable with. Don't worry about the meta. Just go with someone you know you can play. Morgana comes out as well. I still think that's targeted towards the jungle, but of course, it can go into the support role as well. So we will see what Glenlon takes for the first pick. Asian boy up on deck. So. That's going to be interesting to see. And the other thing we have to talk about is that damage profile. It was mm -hmm. full attack damage composition for the first game. This time, they are hovering that Yone, trying to run it back, trying to show Cheesy Legends exactly how to play this champion. Yeah, Cheesy Legends kind of fed the Z mm -hmm. over there mm -hmm. for Totsu Lady. But it came back. he came back from it. So it's yeah. like Yone can, if he's losing in the lane, he still has a chance to come back no matter what. Yeah, exactly. And it's hard to even judge that with that hugely fed Nasus. Mordekaiser is the answer. Now, this can go in either mid or top, but you generally see a top lane, and especially with the Yasuo. Man, Mark, I am so excited because we are seeing the two brothers face off Yone versus Yasuo yeah. in the mid lane. It's such an exciting match, not just because of the lore. It's such an exciting matchup to watch with the skill. They're dashing all over the place, dodging each other's skill shots, trying to find that all in and trying to limit test and stat check each other. Such an exciting one to watch. So we will keep our eyes peeled on that mid lane. And crazy that they almost have like the same skill yes, set. It's yeah. their very hard champions to play, mm -hmm. but it's all about skill between these two players right now. Yeah, and hopefully these two players are very comfortable on them. Cheesy Legends likely piloting that Yasuo there. Lee Sin is picked once again. Mizuya was looking pretty good on that Lee Sin, had a 3-0 scoreline at one point. Toxic Lady is hovering on the Zillion. This would be a very, very interesting answer here. And this is the question, you know. Cheesy Legends is the mid laner. Asian Boy potentially subbing in for the top laner, so it actually might be a Yone top, and we don't get to see that. In that case, do we see Zillion mid here, or is it going down in the bot and going down in that support role as Misfortune gets locked? Well, like, with Zillion, it's kind of a, like, uh, weird champion. I used to play uh, support back in the day mm -hmm. where I ran Zillion. Zillion, as a support, is a super strong support, even though he's underrated, because he gets those experience points yeah. and gives them to the AD carry, which gets the AD carry more fed and more ahead of the, the opponent's AD carry. But with that, you're playing more of a passive support as well. You just want to throw bombs and poke out the, other, the bot lane as well. Yeah, exactly. You know, you are looking for poke, not exactly going all in, but you can play really well with someone like a Lee Sin trying to get that engagement. I think a really underrated part of Zillion's kit is the speed up and slow down ability, you know, where you're able to 
really you know empower your engage or mm -hmm. your fighter champions to get into position mm -hmm. quicker and that's so important in those early game fights bans coming in now once again it's mundo this does seem to be a target ban up against somebody over on the side mm -hmm. Uh, of J.H. Bruns and Kaiza and Timo taken away. Timo, nobody likes to see that champion no. on the rift, so let's get rid of him. Well, like you said with the Zillion, the speed up boost and the cooldown reductions, you're going to see a lot of bombs flying. Mm -hmm. But we also for don't forget about his ultimate. It's like a, uh, a second uh, uh, Guardian Angels for yes. the team. Which is not bad against a Yasuo, a Misfortune, and a Warren Kaiser, so you have a set. Glenon has a second chance to fight back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 3210 hovering this poppy once again. Maybe a bit of an underrated pick over on JH Bruns. 3210 was everywhere mm -hmm. in that last game. Very, very efficient on the poppy. Good job on the clear, was beating out the Lee Sin mm -hmm. in terms of pathing, in terms of clear speed. So watch out for that poppy to make an impact. Aphelios being hovered. Maybe we do see it. An interesting idea, but Lucian is picked mm -hmm. instead, and I'm not sure I like this. Lucian pretty weak in the bot lane right now. Uh, and we, we do see casual hovering. And there we go. The Jax is picked once again. Mm -hmm. And so is this going up to uh, Asian Boy in the top lane, or is it casual switching in for the top lane and uh, Asian Boy going into the support role? Definitely going to be Zillion support here, almost certainly anyway. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that, that means Yone in the mid lane, and maybe we do get our Yasuo Yone matchup after all. Yeah. And we see the final pick here just for the, the Oriana. Mm hmm. Oriana coming in. I suppose that's likely a support Oriana. Very interesting compositions here coming in from mm -hmm. both of these teams. It's uh, definitely non-standard. One. I'm very excited. You know, we we sort of have a bit of a we we have a bit of a build up here because mm -hmm. we don't get to see exactly where all these champions are playing until they do load into the rift. Exactly. So for now, we can only speculate. No. Okay. So is it Oriana going support? You can even potentially do something like a Misfortune or a Mordekaiser support, though it doesn't feel that definitely not Mordekaiser. But you can even do a Misfortune support. It's happened before. Zillion does appear to be going down into that bot lane, though. Casual, mm -hmm. looking to play this support champion and yeah Lucian here's the thing you know Lucian is pretty weak in the bot lane but a very good duelist so if you get those early kills Lucian can start to become mm -hmm. a split pushing threat which is really dangerous since you've already got the Yone and the Jax exactly but well, is it possible that it can be a Mordekaiser jungle because I, I you don't see it often but it's there that's the thing Mordekaiser can clear the jungle, it's true. Uh, I just think that, yeah, and then Poppy, of course, could be going top lane, but we just saw 3-2-1-0 on the Poppy, so I've got to predict that it's going to be mm -hmm. Poppy jungle again. Mordekaiser definitely uh, fine in the solo lanes as well. One thing we can almost say for sure is that it is Mizuya on that Lee Sin once again. Had a lot of impact. This time, if we take a look at the scaling, it's much more evenly split. Mm -hmm. You do have, of course, Yasuo and Mordekaiser scaling up very well, but on the other side, the Yone has gone over to Glenlon as well. Mm -hmm. You still got to watch out for that Jax. You know, if Katie Raz hadn't been disconnecting, she would have been having a very good advantage in that lane and might have been able to bully the Nasus out. Jax is a late game carry as well, so yeah. nothing to shake a stick at here between these two teams and you know I'm not sure whose draft I prefer I just have to give the edge to Glenlon because the Oriana support doesn't feel like the most efficient yeah. pick here I think that Zillion and Lucian definitely can bully out this lane early on and even when you hit level six as long as they can dodge that Oriana shockwave mm -hmm. I think the Lucian Zillion lane definitely can get an advantage there yeah. it's gonna be a lot of poke from the bot lane because of those Zillion bombs mm -hmm. Even though like Oriana can shield it, she can't shield everything. Mm -hmm. So she has to shield herself and that misfortune because mm -hmm. you want that misfortune fed. Once the misfortune like falls off, it's really hard for her to come back as well. Yeah, we're gonna be really looking to three two one zero in the jungle to try to make an impact on this mm -hmm. game and try to kind of stop those lanes. The other thing, an, an interesting idea, you know, of course the Yone Yasuo lane is gonna be all over the place. We'll keep our eyes trained there, but we gotta look at the top lane as well. These are two very very different champions. Mm -hmm. Mordekaiser very much interested in trying to bully you out of lane, try to become sort of that 1v5 hyper carry drain tank near the end of the game and using that Rift Maker to try to continue the sustain. So Patrick Starr already, you know, Nasus is a similar idea, just mm -hmm. walking in, wading into the fight and trying to destroy everybody. Jax, on the other hand, more precise. You need a lot of good risk reward analysis to be able to play this champion really well. And that's so we're going to look to Asian Boy, the substitute coming in to see if he can do that exactly that, you know, because 
Misfortune is the 80 carry over on the side of J.H. Brunson. That's a very immobile 80 carry. There is peel available, but when you go up against the likes of Yone and Lee Sin, you need your peel to really be on point because mm -hmm. Misfortune does not have a lot of ways to get out of there. Exactly. Well, you can also for like Morkaiser can take away someone from a fight for about like five seconds. Mm -hmm. If I was Package Star, I would take out like probably the Yone or the Jax. Even though I if you can't win the matchup, you can still deal damage to them mm -hmm. and still protect your misfortune as well. Yeah, exactly. Going to be looking for Patrick Star to do that. And if Patrick Star does get way ahead in that lane, you've got to take a look at you know the other team paying the QSS tax. Mm -hmm. You got to get that Quicksilver Sash to try to get out of the Death Realm that Mordekaiser mm -hmm. puts down on you. And so that does slow down those champions who are so item dependent, like Jackson Yone. It really, really slows them down and makes it so that they are very you know that they don't get to their those item power spikes as soon as they uh, mm -hmm. they would otherwise like to. Yeah. So we are into the game. Reminder, J.H. Bruns has gone up 1-0 in the series. And so that is going to be the pressure on to Glenlon to try to take this one and bring us to a game three here in the B-side finals for the Spring Invitational. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. This is the Manitoba High School Esports Association Spring Invitational 2021. We got J.H. Bruns up against Glenlon Collegiate. After that, a little bit later on our second stream, we're going to have Windsor Park up against Kildonan East for the the A side finals, and uh, yeah, you know this. This is the matchup of the two that we were looking at to be one of the closest, and we can already see there's a lot of competition between these two teams. I'm very excited to see what Game Two brings us here. Exactly, there's going to be a lot of team fight in this one, I, I believe, mm -hmm. because you have the Oriana Shockwave, the Yaswell Ultimate, and the Misfortune Ultimate from JH Bruns, but you also have a lot of protection from Glenmon to protect that Lee Sin or even the Lucian just to peel off those heavy tanks from Mordekaiser and mm -hmm. the Poppy. Once again, we have Jax with Ignite up in the top lane. So Asian Boy going for Jax with Ignite. And, uh, you know, uh, that is a very interesting thing mm -hmm. to go up into. Once again, you don't have that teleport available. You don't have that late game insurance that you can continue that split push. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you see Yone. This is a common thing you see with these very hyper carry t style fighter matchups in the mid lane. Toxic Lady has gone for the exhaust to try to shut down Cheesy Legends with the Ignite. Now, Toxic Lady definitely got the better of Cheesy Legends in that uh, mid lane matchup mm -hmm. last time. Yone has way more potential to scale into the late game than Zed does, especially against a team that's a little more tanky mm -hmm. with the Mordekaiser and Poppy. So that's something I'm really going to be watching out for is to see if Toxic Lady can once again get that advantage in the mid lane and transfer it into the other lanes mm -hmm. to give them the best chance to take this series to three. Exactly. It, if I was going to I would totally forget about game one because yes. that was an unfortunate circumstance what yes. they had. And just trying to at least get to game three. Exactly. Yeah. And so that is the goal right now for Glenlon. They are starting off here going towards the bot side of the jungle. Both teams not looking to really do any crazy invades. Everybody playing pretty passively. We saw a pretty slow start in the first game, which I liked. I think these two teams kind of have to take stock of each other, play measured League of Legends for the first little while, especially with the team comps they've got. A lot of these champions are really waiting for level six to activate. Now, the exception is Lixuno and Casual in the bot lane. They are wanting to get kills as early and as often as possible. Otherwise, that Lucian starts to become more and more, you know, less and less useful over the course of the game. Exactly. Because Lucian is like very item dependent, like mm -hmm. every other champion. But yeah. you have to build that essence fever because Lucian, you don't realize it, but Lucian uses so much mana yeah. with those E dash and those Q piercing lights. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, you know, item dependent, you're exactly right. Like some a champion, for instance, like Poppy is not particularly item dependent. You've mm -hmm. got everything you need just with the kit. So yeah, Lucian is very much fits the bill there. So if you don't start getting the gold, Lucian can get outscaled very quickly and can find it very, very difficult to do the damage he needs to do as an AD carry. Luckily, Toxic Lady is here on Yone, you know, almost a secondary AD carry, a hyper carry as it were in that mid lane. So once again, both junglers starting at the bot side, just uh, doing their camps. Mizuya did a pretty slow clear last time, and yeah, Lee Sin doesn't have the fastest clear anymore, so 3-2-1-0 might get a little bit ahead here as he did last game. Yeah. We're gonna also have to look for that scuttle fight we saw earlier, because 3 2 one zero actually won the first scuttle fight, and mm -hmm. that's I guess that's how the, she kind of pivoted to the win on their team. Yeah, he definitely got things going there, even with uh, some priority gained by the solo laners, and once again, Patrick Star getting bullied out a little bit. You got to use that dueling power of Jax to 
try to get Mordekaiser out of the way before he gets some of that Omni Vamp into the kit, before he starts healing up and uh, really being difficult to deal with. Here we go. This is going to be all game long. Yone versus Yasuo. Back and forth, back and forth. Who can dodge the wind uh, tornadoes? Who can get the damage down? So yeah. far, you know, Cheesy Legend is just coming out a little bit ahead there. Yep. Between the Yone and the Yasuo, it's like I'd rather have a Yone on my team because he can set up like really easy than a Yasuo can. Because Yasuo mm -hmm. needs to hit a knock up. And if you look at JH Run's team, there's <coughs> probably only two members on their team that can do a knock up as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're definitely relying on that Yasuo a little bit. But of course, the Orianna ultimate can be. That's a combo we got to be looking out for. A bit of a wombo combo there. And of course, Poppy as well got some knock up abilities. So there we go. Toxic Lady coming in into Cheesy Legends. Cheesy Legends took a lot of damage there. Definitely Toxic Lady coming out ahead in that trade. And with that exhaust up, you definitely favor Toxic Lady at this point in the laning phase. Exactly. And look at this. The Scuttle is contested. 3 2 one, zero, just going for bot cam straight to red, straight to Scuttle, beating out the Lee Sin. We'll see if they meet down in the bot lane there. But Asian Boy continuing to harass. This is a problem though, because Poppy is on the way. 3 2 one, zero, has got the flank coming in. And will Patrick go down already? Patrick Starr goes down to the Ignite. That's going to pay off, but the trade does come through. 3 2 one, zero, avenging his fallen comrade there. And uh, that is going to be the first blood going over to Jack, so Asian Boy will be happy with that trade, but did expend the flash. Patrick Starr does have the teleport available to get a bit of a CS lead back. That was, a, that, that was like a perfect timing gang. Mm -hmm. Even though you do lose uh, the first blood, you still got to go back to the 3 one 0 the Poppy carrying their team. But Patrick Starr gained them CS before uh, Asian Boy comes back into lane. Mm -hmm. See, Asian Boy has taken the Vamp Scepter here, as well as that Corrupting Potion. Definitely very, very good for those early duels. Looking to continue to get kills. And yeah, like we said, the Teleport Advantage is in the favor of J.H. Bruns. So uh, Asian Boy needs a bunch more kills. Really needs to bully that lane out if he wants to really succeed here in carrying his team. Now, we do see a bit of a gank coming in here as well. Zuya is going for the Yasuo. There's the knockup coming through. Cheesy Legends does have the flash available and is going to commit that flash. So that's going to be a successful gank from Mizuya. Well done there, but Cheesy Legends does a good job getting out. I like the play from Toxic Lady, though, to interrupt that Yasuo dash with the knockup. Very impressive stuff there. And Toxic Lady continuing to win out in this mid lane matchup. Yeah, Yoni is like a, a better duelist than the Yasuo yep. until Yasuo hits that ultimate. Yep. Because she can like uh, safely just poke out the Yasuo and come back and still be able to farm safely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. See, more interactions, more and more. Like you said, very similar champions, but Yoni a bit of an advantage there. Once again coming in, remember, no flash this time on the Mordekaiser, still not level 6, so can't use the Death Realm. Asian Boy having to wait for cooldowns, has to get out of there. Patrick Starr getting the healing down, and the Q doesn't quite hit, but that is very worrying for Asian Boy here, not able to get that, and you got to wonder, maybe if he held his nerve a bit, he could have won out on that trade. Now you see Patrick Starr just using that Doran Shield to heal up here. Asian Boy, though, with the lifesteal can get into a advantageous position and has hit level 6. So Patrick Starr is being denied CS and XP right now. Yeah, and the Unite's going to be coming up soon, so Agent Boy wants to fight that more guys no matter what. Yeah. He wants to get yeah. fed. He wants, he wants first blood again. Exactly. Asian Boy looking for that one. Needs more kills in this lane. As you're already getting hit by the poke there, and yeah, this you can see this uh, zillion really getting poked out. Nice job there by the MF, but here we go. Asian Boy going for the engage. Can he get the burst down? Not quite. Trick Star gets the shield. Asian Boy has to continue to push in. You can see he's got the target in his sights, looking for that kill, but Patrick Star in his nerve here, and yet yeah, is going to be rewarded with some CS. But you can see because of the bullying that's been happening, because the Jax has been able to get an advantage in the top lane, that means that Patrick Starr is about 10 CS behind, which is definitely non-trivial at this point in the game. Exactly. Now that Ignite's up, Asian Boy wants to fight that Mark mm -hmm. But they will lose the Dragon advantage if the uh, Mark has teleport up and ready to go for that 5v4. Dragon fight coming up. Exactly. Right now, had to use it to get back to lane. Ooh, Juno. 
That's a bunch of damage in the flash from his fortune as well is available. Can he get there? The Oriana slow coming in, but the turret shots dissuade the misfortune from getting any further. Jax Jeb's not managing to get that. A good try, though, using that misfortune to bully out. And you can see that lethality. The serrated Dirk already picked up, but fights going on all the way across the map. Mizuya waiting for that to expire. 3 to 1 0 has to flash away. Mizuya using the ward hop to get there. Mizuya gets the kill. Jax Jabs is right in his sights as well. The Q, the double kill coming in from Mizuya. The Lee Sin is now online. And will this. Will this bomb get the kill? Not quite. The Oriana gets the shield just in time, but still exceptional play there from the jungler of Glenlon, and that is going to be a 3-1 to one score line and a 1,000 gold lead for Glenlon. That was an excellent gank from Mizuya. He saw his, like, they saw that the MF burned the flash, just trying to get the kill, but Mizuya was there to react to it and get the, the two double kills and then the Cloud Drake as well. Yeah, they're getting the dragon, like you say. And yes, yeah, still this farm lead is being held by Asian Boy up in the top lane. The serrated Dirk, you can see by Mizuya, that's why he's got so much damage. But look at this, getting a little bit low, and uh, Toxic Lady might be able to come in here and find something. No level six for the misfortune, so you can't contest that. And yeah, they decide they are not going to try to mess with this. They're getting out of there. And the, oh, Toxic Lady is actually going in. Alien's going very, very low and almost goes down to the Yone engage. Not quite enough damage. And Toxic Lady had the ultimate, so you could potentially argue that Toxic Lady should have gone for that kill. Death Realm is down, though, by, uh, by the way, up here in top lane. Patrick Star doing a lot of damage. Asian Boy having to flash away once again. He has to just wait for that, those cooldowns going in. Patrick Star gets the shield, and he gets the kill! The turret shot helps him out, and Mordekaiser with the outplay. Asian Boy is just so, so desperate for that kill, but in the end, just goes a little bit too far. Exactly. He kind of overcommitted. You won the trade already. You don't have to overcommit for the kill. You have the CS lead. Yeah. You have the item lead. But I guess it was just like that little Bramble vest and that one tower shot that mm -hmm. um, was an unfortunate turn of events for Asian Boy. Yeah, and once again, you know, just to point this out, the Zillion is in the support role, so there's still very, very little magic damage on the side of Glenlon. They're going for these AD focused, auto attack focused compositions a lot of the time, and this time they've got the scaling to back it up with the Yone and the Jax, but still, it's only armor that the Mordekaiser and Poppy have to build. There is Mizuya trying to get away, but Cheesy Legends hits the ultimate and the shutdown comes through. Mizuya is walking up a little bit too far. Nice work there by Cheesy Legends to take advantage, but you've got to say Mizuya was a little out of position there. Yeah, unfortunately, that was an unfortunate gang. Mm. Uh, Toxic Lady just wanted to poke them out. She got escaped right away, but Mizuya kind of got greedy there and gave a goal to the Cheesy Legends, which is going to fail this Yasuo, which is going to be super scary for Toxic Lady to deal with. Yeah, very scary indeed, and the Berserker's Greaves come in for both of the brothers here. Asian Boy trying to get away. Will the stun come in? It will, and it gets pulled back as well. Asian Boy has to run away, and the Q is going to come in. Patrick Star once again, after falling behind early in lane, has managed to pull it back with the help of some nice outplays and some jungle assistance as well. And Mizuya had a great play in the bot lane, but 3 2 one is the one who's been affecting the map the most here. Yeah, like, Poppy, Poppy is a great jungler just because she has a little bit of movement speed from her W yeah. to stop the dashes from the jacks for the escape. Yeah, Poppy's such an amazing ganker. You saw it right there, even with the ward hop. Still, Asian Boy not able to get away. And uh, if we look down at this CS, you know, it is dark times in bot lane. And we s said that this Lucian had to get ahead if he wanted to be relevant in the game, and that is definitely not the case. Uh, uh, Juno has 60 CS to the 88 of the Misfortune. Very, very tough situation down there. Doesn't feel like Casual is able to contribute a lot of poke to this lane that he needs to be doing. So good job there by the bot lane. On the other lanes, though, it is a farm lead for all of the members of Glenlon. So if they keep that farm lead going, this game definitely could be turning around here. And uh, no, nothing being set up around the bot lane. Everybody just sort of backing up and waiting it out. Uh, the ocean soul is up, or the ocean dragon is up next, and so it's going to be either mountain or infernal soul in this game, and that could be another thing Glenlon wants to focus on, is getting those dragons stacked yeah. up, trying to get that soul. Yeah, of course. But now, if you're an Asian boy in that situation, you're behind in kills and in gold right now. Mm -hmm. But with the ignite, you kind of have to walk to lane, which is yeah. very unfortunate. That's where the teleport comes in. 
from Patrick Star. He has teleport up, so he's ready for the next dragon fight, mm -hmm. or wants to get in lane to punish Asian Boy with that Jax pick with the Ignite. Yeah. Yeah, and Asian Boy's got the pieces for Blade of the Ruined King, and that's going to really help out with dueling. Oh, the the ex ultimate combo coming in. Jax Jabs looking for the kill on Zillion, and the flash has to come through. Ixunuo looking for to find some damage, but he does not want to be anywhere near there. Flash is away and just survives that. But Jax Jabs is doing so much damage, and Casual steps up a bit too far there. Unfortunate situation from that. But here's Asian Boy trying to fight here. Still a level down, and there's the Death Realm coming through. Toxic Lady looking for damage here. Toxic Lady's the only one who's well and truly winning her lane on this side, but is getting some damage down. Will he be able to get that? Yes, he will, but he gets stunned under the tower, and 3-2-1 coming in once again with the revenge play. 3 2 one zero just always seems to be right there on the rotation to match that Lee Sin. Yeah, 3 2 one zero knows where the Lee Sin's coming. Because mm -hmm. if you see all of these wards in the red side, yep. it's all red wards. You, don't, you only see one pink ward in the blue side, which is, if you're uh, Glenlon, you have to anticipate a junk a gank from the poppy now because mm -hmm. there's so many wards in the Ocean Drake side of the dragon. Yeah, and Mizuya is just doing what he can. Three kills already, we mentioned really well last time, but still not quite getting what he needs. Cheesy Legends and Toxic Lady still fighting it out here. The ultimate from Yasuo, will this be enough? The Immortal Shield Bow isn't completed on Toxic Lady, so it doesn't have that shield to block. You can see still Asian Boy at two levels down this time. The Death Realm comes out, that might be a problem, but Toxic Lady is also trying to bait in Cheesy Legends. Going down, ultimate comes. There's Mizuya with another kill. And it looks like the Jax as well. Asian Boy did survive that fight up in the top lane. So even though the Dragon will go over, yeah, will go over to JH Bruns. And Lixunuo goes down. The ultimate comes through, but Mizuya is a very dangerous Lee Sin right now. Jax jabs, holding the flash. Here is Mizuya coming in. There was no flash for the Misfortune. 3 2 one zero coming in, but now it's a two versus one. And the ultimate comes through. A little bit of a miscommunication there. And this fight has gone on a long time, and it's going to keep going as the teleport comes through. Casual has to back off here. There's no ultimate, remember, for the Mordekaiser. So Casual will be able to run away if he's got the move speed available. Lots of damage. Patrick Star continuing to chase, continuing to lumber on into the jungle. Casual takes a bunch of damage. Flash coming in. Mordekaiser's over the wall. Mizuya trying to help his comrade, but it's just not going to happen. Goes in for the shutdown, and it's actually Zillion ends up getting it. Man, Mark, this fight has been going on forever, it feels like. And in the end, it does look like like Glenlon's going to be able to somewhat turn it around here. Mizuya with some great patience in that play, and they bait in and they get the shutdown onto Patrick Star. Yeah, casual like kind of just, like you don't chase any in, in any kind of game you want to chase. Mm -hmm. But casual like waited it out, waited it out, and then all of a sudden his teammates were there to back him up no matter yeah. what. Yeah, you know, great job by, you know, great teamwork there on the side of Glenlon. They really pulled that off even when they were sort of behind in gold. And it's a lot of it is off of Mizuya's back. Really impressive from the Lee Sin. We mentioned that 3210 had been in the right place at the right time, but Mizuya has got those Lee Sin mechanics, mm -hmm. knows the limits, knows when to go in. Casual keeps taking those cues, though. You've mm -hmm. got to watch out for those low health minions uh, not standing in front of those so that Misfortune doesn't have those opportunities. You know, we saw Asian Boy take the Rift Herald as well, which is very, very good for Asian Boy just to push out that Mordekaiser out of lane because he burned the teleport trying to get the gank, but it was an unfortunate gank yeah. nonetheless. Yeah, so the teleport's down. Asian Boy still does have Flash and Ignite available. So if you want to go in, the Blade of the Ruin King finished, the Mercury Treads finished, this would be the time before Mordekaiser has that Rift Maker completed. Shockwave coming in. Junuo, oh, going down, but there is the Zillion ult. But do they have anybody available? The Junuo dashes away, but the Misfortune auto attacks are just too much. One more will take him down, and Casual's in threat as well. Jax jabs with amazing target selection there, getting both kills in that tower dive. Very, very impressive stuff. There isn't a lot of skill expression mm -hmm. available on Misfortune, but that is what you want to see from Jax jabs. Yeah, Misfortune, like, no matter what, that yeah. ultimate's gonna hurt. With just one item, two items, it's gonna hurt. There's shutdown coming in. Oh man, and I'm sorry to cut you off there, but that is going to be Toxic Lady trying to get some cleanup and does manage to kill Misfortune, doesn't get the Orion. It was very close. Yeah. But you can see Asian Boy still really struggling in this top lane, and this turret's down. Yeah.
one turret for another turret. It's like an e right now, J one has the gold lead, but yeah. they are climbing up. Yeah. I feel like Levon is coming back from it because of this reason, being at the right yeah. place at the right time. But maybe not this time. Mizuya does get caught out a little bit. Cheesy Legends and 3210 both lacking the flash. Mizuya is pretty fast. Gets out of the way. Casual there to save him. Oh man, with some of these really good Lee Sin players, you almost expect them to go in on pretty much every queue that they hit, but not this time. Toxic Lady just scouting out, clearing a ward. I'm going to go back. Like you said, Asian Boy is holding on to that Rift Herald, so that's potential mm -hmm. use of that to push out that lane. And everything kind of resets here. Yes, yeah, still 6-2-1 and one on Mizuya for that Lee Sin. Very much holding a lot of the gold here. And so Mizuya has got a lot of responsibility on his shoulders to continue to use that gold lead, try to get that burst, try to kill those squishy targets and, uh, you know, activate the rest of his team. And the Rift Herald has been activated mid because go. it's so low and there are no more plates. It's, the towers are actually super weak and this tower might go down to one Rift Herald. Yeah, we'll see if they're able to get a hit on this. Yeah, they are. So now that tower is going to survive because of that. Good job there. Uh, if they hadn't gotten that hit on the back of the Rift Herald, it would have gotten the kill with the HP it had. So there we go. Tower doesn't quite go down in mid lane, but the Rift Herald does get the hit off. And like you said, Jade's Brun still with a bit of a gold lead. I like this. Setting up a freeze here. A pretty weak freeze, but a freeze nonetheless. Uh, and that's going to help them farm a little bit more safely. Yep. As we can see, one minute into the Earth Dragon. Yeah, there we go. Mountain Soul is available. Here's Mizuya. Gets put into the Death Realm. He's got a lot of damage and he gets pulled back here. Looking for that damage though. The ultimate comes in. Asian Boy is ready when Patrick Star comes out of the ultimate. And that is the 2v1. Patrick Star not quite fed enough and Asian Boy is gifted the kill. That's a very nice play there. Mizuya baiting out the Mordekaiser and Asian Boy there to clean up. As long as Mizuya and, you know, up against a Lee Sin as Mordecai, you're going to be really frustrated in there with all that ward hopping going on. So now 10 to 10, and yeah, like you said, Glenlon continuing to try to scale up, to try to catch up here uh, in this game. And Cheesy Legends getting caught out here. Cheesy Legends is dead. Mizuya with another one on a rampage with 7, 2, and 2. And now they're going to go for this dragon. The rest of the team is here, but it's a bit of a discrepancy with the 4v5 on the map. So. We'll see if they even decide to contest this. 3 2 one zero is around the back. Does he go for a steal? No, they're just going to back off and give up this dragon. I mean, it's not, it's not that important. It's not Dragon Soul, but it's, yep. it's nice to give up just one dragon once in a while. Yep, totally fine. Totally fine there. I'm interested in this Morgana, or in this Oriana support. It's very uncommon, Mark, and, you know, it definitely does seem to be working out. I like uh, that the Imperial Mandate has gone down to amplify that Misfortune's damage, and Alien was finishing a lot of those kills last game with the Lux. So it looks like these sort of caster uh, mage supports are Alien's bread and butter, and so far it definitely does look very impressive there. Yeah, five assists isn't bad for a support, mm -hmm. as long as they don't get fed as yeah. well. Like, they don't feed, but Jax Jabs and Alien have been winning this bot lane. So as Glenlon, your AD carry is kind of weak at this point. What would you do mm -hmm. at this point? Well, this is the question, right? And this is why I don't care for the Lucian pick in general. I think that this is a draft problem. You, you, you just, you just can't play that champion in the bot lane right now. You just, you, you have to. You're so, so pressured to get kills, and if you can't get them, you just aren't going to be doing much damage at all. Uh, you know, Junuo is just basically a wave clear bot at this point. So yeah, keep farming up. Keep trying to play safe. Make sure you don't feed anymore. And you gotta sort of like. Use yourself as bait for your real carries, the Jackson Yone later on in the game, who are going to yeah. be doing the majority of the damage. And uh, once you get to late game, anybody can do a lot of damage with a bunch of items, right? Exactly. But the other thing that you, you have to look at is that the Junuo was forced onto the Gale Force here instead of the uh, normal Kraken Slayer for Lucian, uh, because Lucian makes a really good use of the Kraken Slayer. He's yeah. getting, the, with those repeated auto attacks, he's getting a lot of procs with that true damage. So that's something that, you know, also is going to have the Lucian struggle a little bit, not having the Kraken Slayer, having to go for the Gale Force to escape the engage instead. Yeah. Uh, but if you use yourself as bait, if you make yourself into a juicy target, maybe for someone like Cheesy Legends, then you can maybe ha make something happen. But Cheesy Legends with good shielding gets out of that one just fine. Yeah. Gale Force is like, I would say if you want to go Gale Force, you have to be winning there. Because yep, Gale Force is you dash in or dash out to survive or get at least a kill. Mm -hmm. With Lucian, you have like, with that, it's like two dashes already, so. 
It's yep. a weird. I wouldn't say Gale Force is the right pick, but it's a, it's not a bad pick. Yeah, I mean it's got a lot of mobility. You've got threats like Mordekaiser and Poppy and Yasuo who you need lots of mobility to get away from. So the Gale Force definitely can be put to use if you're using it well. You see the grouping around the bot side here uh, for the side of Glenlon. Toxic Lady wants to look for something, but doesn't manage to get much as you can already see. Uh, by the way, Jack's Jab is going full lethality on the Misfortune, went for the Dusk Blade, and now more probably Collector coming up next. So Jack's Jab is going to be very dangerous, especially to those squishy targets. Yeah. With What's the collector? It's gonna be like a burst damage out of nowhere. Absolutely. That's what you know forced to use that ultimate to try to get away, but you can see Cheesy Legends just isn't doing a lot of damage yet, even with that Kraken Slayer completed. But you know not feeling super threatened by that, um, by that Yasuo engage there, so they're gonna have to maybe coordinate that a little bit better. Here is Mizuya, speaking of threatening, trying to go in. Alien, ooh, flashes away, and Mizuya trying to sneak that Q around. There is the engage, the Wombo combo. Toxic Lady with a double kill. Unbelievable combo there, and Mizuya's going back for more. That is the kill from the Lee Sin, and all three players go down. Mizuya's got to try to get away here, going to have to use the Blast Cone. Doesn't get out of the way, but does manage to get the dash over the wall. So Mizuya gets out scot-free, and that is a huge swing in the favor of uh, Glenlon Collegiate here. Beautiful work there. I love the combo of the Lee Sin kick with the Yone ultimate. Yeah, because Lee Sin Kick does knock him up, and then with the Yoni Ultimate, it was a second knockout, which was a beautiful execution from Grenlon. Yeah, unreal. That was so, so good. Really nice coordination there. They need more of that. That is the type of thing you need to get yourself into winning positions in these types of games, you know? The team that is more coordinated will often beat the team that, even if that team is a little bit more, you know, mechanically skilled, coordination reigns supreme in these types of games, and so that's what... Uh, Glen Lawn are showing us right now. Mizuya really leading the charge, though. Uh, clearly doing some shot calling here and very, very uh, in sync with his teammates here. So impressive stuff from Mizuya so far. He is 8, 2, and 4 on the Lee Sin with a 600 gold bounty. Meanwhile, the Yone is scaling up. That's an Infinity Edge completed second. Toxic Lady is going to be shredding through these champions. Exactly. And we... A lot of teams, like if you see pro players, they always talk about like the mid laner and the top laner being super good at the, what they do. Mm -hmm. But the underrated, I would say, the role of any team in League of Legends is the jungler because they have so much presence. If you have a good jungler, it doesn't matter what team your rank is. If you have a good jungler that knows what they're doing, knows how to play the champion. Mizuna was behind, but he knew how to help his team out to get them fed as well. You're speaking my language, Mark. A good jungler can definitely turn the tides, and it's often a bit of a thankless role, especially if you play it in solo queue like I do. Uh, a lot of muting of teammates happening uh, because it's always the jungler's fault, but that means the jungler can get some of the glory, and Mizuya, oh, is he following this? Oh my goodness, a huge shockwave, and look at that combo. Jax Jabs has found one, but Toxic Lady's going back in. Will they be able to find anything else? The shutdown coming through, and everything has just opened wide up. Casual's trying to go for a bomb, and Asian Boy has to go in, trying to find Jax Jabs. The triple kill from the Misfortune. That was a bloodbath out near the Dragon Pit, and it ends up in, an, in a two, for, two against one situation. Toxic Lady, the only one remaining, that Oriana and Yasuo combo was devastating. This is why a team fight comp is so great to watch because Oof. of the ultimates. You have the Oriana ult shock waving, knocking them all up. Then you have the Yasuo perfectly caught four people mm -hmm. in that ultimate. And plus the misfortune of oh. just shredding through that armor. So satisfying to watch. And it was amazing that only one kill came out of that initially, but the cleanup did come through. Nice job by Toxic Lady. You can see that this Yone is still turning these fights a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, if 4 0 and 5, Toxic Lady surviving that one. The dragon did go down, so we're still nowhere near Soul here. Two dragons apiece mm -hmm. for each team. But yeah, a lot of this is on Toxic Lady to continue trying to find those last kills in the team fights here. And uh, you can see actually a Warden's Mail has been purchased. So Toxic Lady is, uh, is going tanky now. Interesting idea there. Maybe feeling like she has enough damage already and just wanting to make sure she continues to survive these team mm -hmm. fights, holding onto that bounty. Exactly, because Warden's Mail is slow as attack speed. So you're going to be slow. If you're going to be against the Yasuo, it's fine. But with the Misfortune, She's building flat damage. She already has 
three items com this much misfortune is gonna hurt. Her yeah. ultimate is gonna hurt with those three I completed items. Speaking of hurting, Asian boy putting the hurt on cheesy legends and just runs him down. That is beautiful from the Jackson. Yeah, just stat checking him at this point. Hasn't even finished the mythic for Asian Boy. Went for that Blade of the Rune King first, obviously. So that Stridebreaker is about to come through, and that's going to be even more dangerous. So Jax is something to worry about as well. We talked a lot about Toxic Lady and Mizuya, but Asian Boy, no slouch either, and you can see how dangerous he is. Mizuya going in. Shockwave only finds the Jax. Mizuya, look at that. Just one shot's alien. No problem at all. And this is the cue here, but Casual's going in. Trying for the stun. Jax Jabs is vulnerable. No flash available. Shut down coming in. Mizuya is 11, 3, and 6. And yeah, this Lee Sin is just taking over. I think that after this performance, if Glenlon take this to a game three, JH Bruns are going to look seriously into banning that Lee Sin. Yeah, the Lee Sin was right there in the right place in the wrong time. Mm -hmm. But it's like, they lost one team fight. They came back and they, all right. they said, all right, let's not do that again. Let's not fight in a place where the Orianna get all, all of us. Mm -hmm. They picked off the Orianna, and then they picked off the Misfortune, and now they're looking for the Baron pit. Yeah, you know, as opposed to the Wombo combo, I'll talk about this after. Casual does not have the flash, and so I'm going to have to get out of the way. Toxic Lady trying to delay a little bit. Casual actually gets the stun. 3-2-1-0 is not being able to catch that Zillion, so they have to go for a steal here. 3 2 one zero has the flash available. No. Go for it. Ultimate coming in. Toxic Lady. Beautiful work. Oh, and the Lee Sin does finish it off. A Valiant attempt, but 3210 didn't get the smite off. And so that's the Baron as well going over to Glenlawn Collegiate. And they are starting to take over this game. And man, you just cannot say enough about Mizuya just activating every single play. But in that play, Toxic Lady using the Yone to zone the rest of the players out of the Baron pit, delay that engagement, make sure there was the, as less of a chance as possible for a steal coming in from 3210. Toxic Lady really helping secure that one. Exactly. And 3210, I believe, is only level 12 to Bazinia's level 15. Mm. So the smite is a huge difference from two levels compared to level 15. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's very, very difficult to steal there. You've got to rely on a mistake from the Lee Sin. And Lee Sin, of course, having a bit of extra execute damage, very difficult to steal from that champion. Believe me, I've tried, but it is 49 thousand to 46,000 a 3,000 gold lead here for the side of Glenlawn and they are looking poised to take us to a game three here yeah and you see Asian boy just pushing out that top lane we talked about Asian boy being behind but now he is coming back and being able to 1v1 this Mordekaiser as well absolutely Mordekaiser not able to get that 1v1 you can see that the Riftmaker and Riley's Crystal Scepter have been completed now the Thorn Mail is next that's going to help a lot 8210 doesn't quite get the uh, W up in time and now it's just dead yeah Asian Boy and Mizuya combining for another catch and you just cannot get anywhere on the map here against these two champions they are everywhere they are always watching the entrances to their side and Dragon about to come up here, and Glenlon just in, in full control right now. Yeah. If you were a JH Bruns, you would probably try and find the team fight mm -hmm. in the Dragon Pit because they have such a strong team fight combo. One Wombo combo yeah. can change and make a huge difference in the fight. Exactly, yeah, and that's exactly what they need to do. You know, we've already seen the power of that shockwave combined with the Yasuo. They just need to find it. And Alien did an amazing job sneaking that one through last time, but uh, now you, they, you've got to imagine Glenlon's just going to be worried and looking out for it all the more and not grouping up for that shockwave. There's Toxic Lady, look at that. Ooh, getting really spicy there. It doesn't go for anything else. But yeah, you know, they, they are so, so wary of the possibility of that Wombo combo again that it just feels very, very difficult. Alien's going to have to use some, you know, play some 4D chess to be able to get them in the right position exactly. uh, for next time. Now, if Glenlon has the Dragon Soul advantage, so they will be looking mm -hmm. and the Baron's Pit yep. advantage. So now they're going to be looking for that fourth and final Dragon Soul, which is going to be so hard to stop this Jax once they get the four Dragon Souls. Yeah, Baron's up. Uh, Baron. Uh, Buff has just expired, that means it's up in three minutes. And so the dragon being up in 4.15 means that they can't quite, it, it, right on spawn you can't do this thing where you fork the Baron and just you know give up the last dragon. You've got to sort of work around the Baron for that minute and a half gap. 
but that still gives um, Glenlon a huge opportunity and a, a big advantage there when it comes to those objectives. That threat of the Dragon Soul, like you said, uh, just gives them that much more pressure here. The thing that they haven't been very successful at so far is pushing towers. Uh, they just have not been able to get that far out onto the map. They've only got taken down two towers here, equivalent to their opponents. And so they need to start translating these fights into, you know, map objectives and lane pressure mm -hmm. so that they can get that vision, they can get a push coming down, and they can maybe start opening up the map for themselves a little bit more. Exactly. Because, like, once you get like the first wave of the turrets in, you can start putting in deep wards and you can get, get catches off the bat mm -hmm. for those dragon fight, hit fights. Absolutely. Jax Jabs. I am just so happy to see Jax Jabs inventory right now. The Serpent Fang has come through and I think that item is so good, especially against a team like this with multiple shields. Mm -hmm. And it is so underrated. People don't realize how much extra damage you get. The 2 one zero though might be taking a bunch of damage here. Mizuya. Oh, Jax Jabs gets spotted out. Mizuya going in but might have gone a bit too far. The rest of the team is here to dissuade that team fight. Good positioning to uh, scare them off by that side of J.H. Bruns. They're able to at least prevent anybody from dying. Now you know Alien is just keeping his eyes peeled, looking for that Orianna ultimate opportunity, looking for that Wombo combo because they know that is how they win a team fight. Now Baron is up in a minute. We'll see what they decide to do here. Now they're going to have to place wards in the Baron pit because they know of what is happening right now. Mm -hmm. They didn't burn any summoning spells, which is nice. So. Jack Jabs has a way to get out of the Lee Sin and the Jax. Yeah, there, you know, there are 10 summoner spells available. Everybody is ready to hit that flash. Everybody's ready to use those summoner spells. But like you said, that level lead still Mizuya two levels ahead. So a significant advantage if it comes down to a smite 50-50. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's not a 50-50, let's just say that, mm -hmm. uh, because of the situation we got here. But still a chance, still always that wombo combo and these neutral objectives that are very important it's kind of exactly what J.H. Bruns wants because they know that the team has to be at least slightly grouped up. Not only that, there's no teleport available for Asian Boy. Obviously didn't take that one, took the Ignite instead. So Patrick Starr can maybe work with something like a split push. If I were J.H. Bruns, I'd be putting Patrick Starr in the bot lane right now to try to get that pressure. Instead, it looks like they're actually just going to give up this Baron because you can see Jax Jabs is bot lane right now. So if they collapse quickly enough, unfortunately, Lixuno is not available to start that Baron either. So it doesn't look like they're prioritizing this, maybe just trying to wait around for the Dragon. Yeah. If I was going on, I would wait out for the Dragon, because Baron buff only lasts three minutes, whereas yep. the Dragon buff lasts an, the entire game. Yes. Yeah, Dragon Soul, the, undoubtedly the stronger objective, but mm -hmm. trying to leverage both definitely can hold some value. Dragon's now up in 56 seconds there, so uh, grouping around it, Vision being controlled. Now, there is the Hail Mary move available for J.H. Bruns. They could just go for the Baron and trade and just decide to give up that Mountain Soul, but it's very dangerous. Jax Jabs with the Lethality build really struggles to do a lot of damage to Mountain Soul empowered champions. Mm. So that's going to be a decision they have to make there. And look at this. They're trying to go for a, uh, a, a Death Bush here, but they're sitting on a ward and they haven't cleared that out. So J.H. Bruns know exactly what's going on here. They know exactly where the enemy team is at this point. How do they use this to their advantage? The team groups up for a death push there. It could be so dangerous. Alien has that shockwave available. And this game, this is on a knife's edge right now. So close here. Toxic Lady has. He found Jax Jabs. The ultimate comes in. Toxic Lady's got the kill. That is huge. Misfortune not available for the fight. And Unless if Alien and Cheesy Legends pull off a miracle here, they're going to have to give up Dragon Soul. Yeah, but that's an unfortunate pick from Jay Frenzy. Mm -hmm. Toxic Lady is super strong right now yeah. with that Yoni. Yeah, you can see Randuin's Omen is completed there. Oh, Asian Boy just pops the flash. Get there a little bit quicker. His teammates uh, <laughs> roasting him for that, clearly. But yeah, the Dragon Soul completed. The Yone 5 0 and 6 with Randuin's Omen finished. That's what that Warden Mail was heading towards. They're now going to get the Baron, unless if there's a Miracle Steal. And yeah, Mark, it just looks so much more difficult as the minutes mm -hmm. tick on. This is where they need, this is what they need right here. Alien needs this huge shockwave. Trying to go for it. TC Legends tries to steal. There is the ultimate. Mizuya finishes it off. 
and they get the Baron. Jax finishing that one. Casual is going pretty low, and Mordekaiser is in, but Bay's going to go down as well. And yeah, you know, it just isn't likely here for them to get much more out of this. They try to go for something. I Alien maybe had the chance to go for a shockwave there, but Cheesy Legends tried to go for the steal instead, so a bit of a mis-execution. Mizuya with a huge amount of burst there. That is probably going to decide the game as the Oriana goes down. No more well, minions available for them, but look at this. Mizuya is just does not care about any of your turrets. He doesn't care if he's got a wave. He is just going for the kill, and so is Toxic Lady. They have so much dive on this composition, and Glenlon is finishing this one off. They are going to take us to a game three. They are going to equalize this series, and we are about to find out in the next game who wins this series and who takes the B-side final title here. But yeah, the GG's coming through, and Glenlon coming back in style with a beautiful play by Mizuya and Toxic Lady in particular, just taking over this game. Yeah, Mizuya made such a huge impact. He was two levels ahead of 3-2-1-0 the entire game. Yeah. He was making plays in the top lane, making plays in the bottom lane. It's so hard to stop a good jungler. It was, Mizuya yeah. just popped off this game. Yeah, absolutely. While well, we wait for the uh, next uh, lobby to start up, we can talk a little bit about what you might want to adjust in terms of the bans because you definitely, you know, it is time It is time to ban that Lee Sin. You cannot allow that through anymore. Yeah, Lee Sin was like a menace in the top, in the jungle. He was like everywhere. Like 3210 had his moments, but Mazulia was just everywhere. Like they, he was getting objectives. Like they got four Dragon Souls, four... Dragons, yeah. and then the Baron, which was a huge difference in the entire game. Yeah, Mizuya all over the map, and that means we are going to game three. We will find out exactly what these two teams want to play against each other, and we'll find out who will take the B-side finals right after a quick break, so don't go anywhere.
right. Welcome back, everybody, to the Manitoba High School Esports Association. We got the Spring Invitational 2021 B-Side Finals here between Glen Lawn and J.H. Brunson. We've had a barn burner so far. It's yeah. been one game each for each team. They've both taken one here, so we are up to game three. We're ready to play that silver scrapes. We are ready to get in right now. And, uh, yeah, we've got some interesting stuff to talk about with this draft. Um, when we are when we get into the champ select, so uh, yeah, you know we we first have to talk about Mizuya, who just completely opened it up there uh, over for the side of Glenlawn. That Lee Sin is so so terrifying when Mizuya is piloting it, and I think you know if I were JH Bruns, I'm just taking that out of the equation. I'm banning that one right away. Yeah, Mizuya played Lee Sin both games really well. It was just yeah. an unfortunate first game with the disconnection yep. and stuff like that. Yeah, but. If I was J.H. Brunt, I would ban out that Lee Sin right away because he had made such a huge presence. He was dashing into the back line super easily, no protection no whatsoever. Yep. And Toxic Lady just came backing up to support it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Toxic Lady, very, very powerful there. And as well, Asian Boy coming in uh, to sub in for, um, uh, for the uh, previous top laner. Asian Boy was looking really good on the Jacks, especially in the late game, very much knowing how to open up the game with the Jacks. You see with some Jax players, they can get ahead in lane or they can go even and scale up a little bit, but then they have really struggled to make an impact in the late game because Jax is, you know, tough to execute. And in this case, they're just taking it away. They say, you, play, you played it both games, we're getting rid of it, and there we go, the Lee Sin ban we were looking for. Yeah, Lee Sin, like, Mizuya was a... Now we have to see what Mizuya is also comfortable in with. Because mm -hmm. we only saw Lee Sin, we don't know what else champions he's good at. So yeah. we get to see a different side of Mizuya for now. Yeah, and I'm wondering about the Poppy as well, because 3-2-1-0 got a little behind Mizuya, but still was making a lot of impact, and maybe you want to take him off that comfort pick, put him on something else. Yone coming out as a ban as well. Not able to, uh, nobody's able to play that one, so we're not going to see that matchup anymore. And, uh, you know, in both games so far, we've had a full AD composition from Glenlon, so we'll see if they go with more of a control mage now that the Yone is out of the equation there, but of course the Zed was played in the first game, uh, and Toxic Lady looked pretty good on that champion as well. So that's going to be available. Yasuo taken away. The brothers are gone. And blue side from J.H. Bruns. They took side pick as they uh, lost the previous game. So, pardon me, we'll see what they prioritize here. Yeah, if J.H. Bruns, I guess, wanted to get that first pick because Glennon had first pick in both games, and they opted to get both of those Jaxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Jax was the first pick both games, so... Well, that priority not available. Ooh, Fiora, a very interesting top mm -hmm. lane blind pick because Fiora often taken as a counter pick to some of these fighter champions, this time taken blind. And, uh, you know, I, I, I can't say that would be my priority here, but, of course, once again, we're looking at comfort picks. We're looking at these types of champions that you just want to play and you know you're familiar with their kit, you're familiar with what you're supposed to do on them. Kha'Zix coming in as the blind jungle pick there. So that's going to be Mizuya once again going on to a really, really dangerous champion, and Akali as well, Assassin Central over here on the side uh, of Glenlarn. Yeah, J.H. Bruns banned out Akali in the first both yes. games, so they were scouting out Mizuya because they saw him as a threat. Mm -hmm. But now they banned out the Lee Sin, but they left the Kha'Zix open. It's, I think it's like a kind of a in or, if, in or out situation for mm -hmm. J.H. Bruns, because we don't want to ban out the jungler's entire arsenal. Yeah. Because yep. you're going to leave up the top lane and the mid lane yep. bands as well. Yeah, exactly. So you got that is the challenge of draft. Now Wukong has been taken here by Cheesy Legends. Not sure where exactly that's going to be going. You didn't maybe expect to see a top lane, but Fiora's already picked, so potentially a mid or jungle Wukong here. Jax Jabs picks up the Ash, very solid. Won the first game with it, no problem. And Always like to see that, but Kaiza, having been banned out for most of these games, now gets picked up here, and that's going to be Lil Junuo coming in. Lil Junuo coming in on that Kaiza. We'll see what support gets paired with that. Yeah, like Kaiza, you need a good CC uh, support. You can go with an Alistar, a Leona. Those are the, like if I was, like I play Kaiza a lot, sure. so I know what supports I want. I want like a CC good comp on my team yep. because. You can dash, like if one CC gets onto a backline, you can just dash right in and burst it so easily. Yeah, 
Diving in on the back line. Kaiser's bread and butter. You know, the closest to an assassin we've got with the 80 carries. And so technically that's sort of like three assassins over on the side of Glenlawn already. They are really going to be threatening Jack's jabs who's picked into mobile 80 carry once more. Mm -hmm. Last band's coming through. Zillion was taken away, not wanting to see Casual up on that one. And Blitzcrank and Oriana, more support bands coming through as well. Looks like a Blitzcrank is not something Glenlawn's wanted to face all series. And Riven actually gets banned out as well. So we're expecting the Akali to be going mid. And yeah, some crowd control is very much needed right now for the side, oh no, of Glenlawn. But instead, they're just picking more carries, Mark. It's Toxic Lady taking Viego here. And wow, this is, uh, <laughs> this is a lot of damage from the side of Glenlawn. Yeah, like, Viego is a very, like, late-game carry champion. If, yeah. like, for the new players of League of Legends, Viego can steal an enemy champion, mm -hmm. which, like, in their team, they actually have, or, like, in the opponent's team, they have a lot of utility for them to steal from mm -hmm. that Viego. Yeah, and here we go. Mundo comes out. This was banned both games before, so 3 to one zero going on that one instead of the Poppy. And it looks like that's going to be the jungle pick. And Morgana comes in for a little Junuo, so gets switched around looks like it's Morgana support very very little crowd control I'm I'm worried about that for Glenlawn they need so much advantage in lanes because in team fights they're gonna really struggle to deal with someone like a Fiora or Wukong if they don't have that crowd control available yeah like I think uh, the Glenlawn's choice is let's get on the back line let's get rid of those Ash mm -hmm. and Lux because they will lose a lot of damage but let's say Mundo was there it's yeah. gonna be so hard for Glenlawn to destroy that Mundo because yeah. Mundo is going to have so much health regen, so much tankiness in the kit. Man. It, I think for right now, an assassin comp is not the way to go against the JH Bruns teams. Yeah, I, especially with it, you know, leaving up things like Dr. Mundo, it just feels like such a gamble. But, you know, like you said, Viego, very much a possibility to scale into the late game. It's going to be Viego mid, actually, and Asian Boy is taking Akali into the top lane. So, yeah, that's the other thing. we got to talk a little about Viego. I play a little bit of it myself, and uh, the way you want to play... Well, the reason you take Viego is if you feel like you've got a big champion pool, right? Because yep. you've got to have good mechanics on all the other champions that could show up. So uh, not only is Toxic Lady going to have to play Viego, she's going to have to play Fiora, Wukong, Ash, Dr. Mundo, and Lux at certain points of this game as well when she takes those souls. And so that's going to be a great thing to watch. Toxic Lady's already shown some really nice skill here, some really good mechanics, and so... We'll see, you know, how she can pull that off on all these other champions. Meanwhile, of course, someone else to look out for is Mizuya on that Kha'Zix. Like you said, being denied it in the previous two games. Now finally getting onto what seems to be one of his most comfortable champions there. So Mizuya, going to be one to watch out for. Needs to snowball pretty hard. There isn't a lot of crowd control besides the Wukong and Ash uh, over on the side of JH Bruns mm -hmm. either. So this one's going to be just an all-out brawl. Yeah, it's going to be like go in, go out for mm -hmm. Glenlon because they have such a like high damage comp. If the Mundo or the Wukong gets super tanky, it's going to be impossible for them to kill it. Yeah. yeah. So they, I guess Glenlon decided no more stalling out. We're going all in for the yeah. finals. Just destroy the Asa and the Lux. Yeah, I'm really excited to see this Akali Fiora matchup up in the top lane because mm. that's a huge skill matchup, right? You know, Akali gets that burst. Akali has so much mobility, but Fiora is the premier duelist in League of Legends. That is mm. what she is designed to do and scale into that late game, deal with hyper carries. Fiora up against Viego is going to be another exciting one to see. So Patrick Starr, you know, having performed pretty well in the top lane so far, getting pretty strong on both the champions he played, but now Fiora is a very different look for him. So we'll see if he is able to have the same impact that he had, you know, on something like the Nasus in game one. Meanwhile, Morgana has finally been let through for casual, and that's been banned out from them all series long. So Morgana Kaiza, you said you like, you know, you you know what you want on Kaiza. Is Morgana one of those champions you're excited to play with? Oh, well, Morgana is like a weird thing to, mm -hmm. uh, b because she only has like two CCs, but the CC is like a very stalled out one. But yeah. the spell shield is super nice against this Wukong and the Ash. So I guess uh, I don't mind a Morgana, mm -hmm. but I'd rather have a hard CC. Like sure. with, like I would have, I would have switched out for Morgana for a Leona or an yeah. Alistar. 
just to get that extra tankiness and that extra engage because you do have three, four assassins in this team. Yeah, exactly. I think that maybe a little engage and a little tankiness wouldn't go amiss here. But yeah, even something like I saw them hover the Rakan. I would have loved to see that because that's great engage and really has a lot of utility. But they do go for their Morgana. So everybody here on the side of Glenlon, potential to carry the game, potential to stack up that damage and uh, try to just burst down the side of J.H. Bruns. So, we are about to get into it. We have one game apiece for each of these teams in the Spring Invitational B-Side Finals between J.H. Bruns and Glenlawn Collegiate. Now it's time to find out who is going to take Game 3 and take the Finals. Yeah. Well, we're going to see so much ganks from, the, so much Assassin play because of Viego and Akali. Mm -hmm. They have so much dashes in the back line as well. Yeah, and look at this. Asian boy going Full on disrespect, not even taking flash mark up against that top lane uh, matchup here. Teleport ignite on the Akali. We know she's very mobile. Maybe thinking Asian boy, maybe thinking he doesn't need the flash, and mm -hmm. you know he is going to be tested by Patrick Star up in the top lane on that Fiora. Yep, yeah, Pat Patrick Star has been playing super well in both games, mm -hmm. but I guess it was just like the disconnection issue for the first game. But Asian Boy came back and brought their team for yeah. that second win to make it to game three. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's what we're going to find out here. I'm interested in this mid lane matchup as well. You know, you've got Wukong up against Viego here. Mm -hmm. And once again, we've got a team, this time it's J.H. Bruns, not drafting really any magic damage besides Alien, though I say that. In game one, Alien definitely was providing enough magic damage for the whole team with that Lux, you know, being able to stack up that damage, being able to get that ultimate down. Mm -hmm. And against a squishy team like this, maybe you don't need so much uh, damage profile switching around, you know. There's no tank over on the side yep. of um, Glenlon, so maybe not prioritizing, you know, having a lot of great damage profile. Yeah, it's just like, well, they don't have a tank, so like it's okay to go full on AD comp. Yeah. It's, it's pretty much just like, can Alien do enough magic damage to shred through this arm, if they have any armor on their team? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, that's what we're going to find out very soon as we load into the game here and see these two teams battle it out. Now we've, we're in a best of three, so these two teams have gotten a feel for each other and these are the comps they've gone with, surprisingly. But, yeah, they've gotten an idea of how each other play. They've gotten sort of this you know, th this margin from each other, neither team getting really aggressive early, but generally it is Glenlon who seem to be the more proactive team, and uh, J.H. Bruns a little bit more reactive, needing to find, being fine with sitting back, waiting for their team to scale up, and getting into those really advantageous mid-game team fights. Yeah, J.H. Bruns' game plan is, can we stall out to gain enough armor for them, just for this Moon Dog to be a, such a huge threat? Yeah. Whereas Glenlon wants to, all right, let's, let's end this game quickly. We want to go home and the day quickly. <laughs> yeah, we want to get out of here. We want to take them down with all of our damage and make sure that they don't come back. So that is Glenlon's plan of attack here. And once again, just honest jungling, no shenanigans, nothing crazy coming in here. It's going to be the Mundo starting at red and Kha'Zix starting at blue. No, I don't really play Viego mid because of the, all the poke comps that yeah. he has to deal with. But if Viego plays against like a close range champion, it's fine for him. Like it doesn't matter where he goes. Yeah, Viego is a strong champion. We're definitely going to be seeing him, uh, you know, pop up in pro play here and there when he does become available. Because yeah, there's just so much potential with this champion to do, you know, crazy things and. You know, against Wukong, it's, Wukong isn't too difficult of a champion to execute on a play-by-play -play basis here. You know, so Toxic Lady, we'll look for that. And yeah, you know, in, in melee matchups, Diego can be really strong because of that somewhat long-range poke that he's got. Uh, Wukong definitely going to be paying for that one. This time, we should see that both teams have a teleport. So uh, as opposed to before where Asian Boy had been taking Ignite and Katie took the same thing, now, there is still Ignite, but the, both teams have got a Teleport available, so nobody's going to get split pushed to death, though Patrick Star didn't really manage to get that rolling anyway. Yeah. I guess they took three Ignites just for, to stop the Mundo and the Fiora, because mm -hmm. Mundo and Fiora thrive on health regain because of, yep. of Fiora's passive to prop that mark on every champion she has. 
Yeah. And with Mundo, it's just pretty much his ultimate that like, gains him so much health. It's insane. Like he goes from 10 health to almost, almost 1,000 health in a one team fight. Yeah, exactly. Mundo definitely very frustrating to play against if you can't reduce that healing. There's a good duck binding coming in already. Shev's taking some damage, but Alien trading back and actually Casual gets the worst of that uh, trade. And also, Jax Jabs had all the stacks on him, but Kaisa didn't manage to get the final hit. And so, always frustrating to see, but playing it safe. Toxic yeah. Lady, great stun. Look at that. This is a very good Viego player I'm already seeing. Like that, you know, you are predicting where the Wukong is going to be in the invisibility. So, nice work there. And Viego does have a bit of a farm lead because of it. Yeah, Viego is like a really annoying champion because he has so much health regain. Mm -hmm. It's like very unnoticeable, but yep. like it sustained damage, he has so much of it. It's insane. Yeah, definitely Grievous Wounds having to be picked up at some point by the side of J.H. Bruns as well. Just a reminder, J.H. Bruns now has switched over to the blue side and Glenlon is on the red. And so they're going to be switching it up a little bit here. It does affect, definitely does affect the game and the jungle pathing a little bit. Ooh, there is the parry. Asian Boy's taking a lot of damage here. Trying to bait out. You see Mizuya is nearby, but so is C10. This is going to be a two versus two situation, and Asian Boy is very low. Mizuya trying to go in, but now that they spot 3210, you can see Mizuya did a better clear, uh, was able to get up to level four. Patrick Starr trying to go in, and Asian Boy almost goes down. Could have even expected the flash there. Mizuya might find this. 3 to one zero takes a lot, but yeah, you just don't quite have the damage there. And you can see Mizuya actually did take the Conqueror, and uh, that's not the not the summoner, you know, not not the rune the, the rune you generally see on Kha'Zix. Yeah, you oh, Kha'Zix is like you want to go in, burst them down, mm -hmm. and deal much damage. You don't go conquer just to survive as Kha'Zix. Yeah. You usually see like a, a electric here or a dark harvest because yeah. dark harvest you're gonna get so much burst damage out of nowhere because yeah. of the dark harvest stacks, or you go electric here just for that. Instant burst on any yeah. one you want. Yeah, the early game fighting power. You know, I'm so surprised by it. I think it might have been a mistake. It's just so uncommon to see that. You know, there is an argument for if you're fighting these long engagements against Wukong and Mundo, maybe Conqueror could do something. But yeah, with Kha'Zix, you just need that burst. Yeah. Zuya, though, looking for a gank here. Dax Jabs gets hit. Oh, the flash. Down. Nice job there by Mazuya to build a flash. Successful gank. Yeah. If you can't get a kill, just get at least one summoner spell off that team. Yeah. And you also don't see, I, I don't want to be a picky Kaisa player, but <laughs> you do not see a best attack on Kaisa anymore. You want to see Hail Blades yep. just to proc off those stacks so much quicker. For that percentage health magic damage for Kaisa. Yeah, pretty unusual to see that press the attack. And like you say, Halo Blades is uh, objectively better now. Mm -hmm. Look at this, Patrick Star is taking a bunch of damage now. Oh boy. Looking to continue to push. Still hasn't expended the ignite, but has used the teleport to get back to lane to maintain a little bit of a CS lead. And that is true across the board for Glenlon. They are able to get those CS lead in every position here. So good on them. A little bit of a gold lead because of it. And Patrick Stars continuing to take damage. Asian Boy clearly on a comfort pick oh. here. Hits that, goes in. The parry comes through. Asian Boy doesn't have any damage left. And there is the tower shot. The ignite comes through oh. in the first blood. It's so close. Asian Boy managing to find it by the skin of his teeth. Amazing work there by Asian Boy. Really knowing the limits of the Akali. And he gets the first blood over Patrick Star. Yeah, that was a, actually a great team fight. Unfortunately, I think Asian Boy leveled up just before she yep. was about to die. So then that little extra health may, may have saved Asian Boy there. And that was a great play by Patrick Star, parrying that mm -hmm. Q. It's thunder on the turret, but unfortunately that Ignite difference is what made the difference. Exactly. Ignite difference indeed, and that's why you take it over the flash. Asian Boy clearly having enough mobility without it. His estimation. So, uh, what that is going to do is open up the dragon a little bit as well. That is uh, Patrick Star going down, but the bot lane still finding a little bit of prio, finding a good rotation there, and knowing Mizuya is nowhere near to contest. So, the kill goes in favor of Glenlon, but the dragon goes in favor of JH Bruns, and uh, we'll see which one ends up having more impact. Yeah. Now, Asia Boy has no slumber spell, so this Akali is very vulnerable to ganks right now. Yeah, especially, you know, yeah, like you say, with no flash there. But a bit of a, 
A bit of a stat lead here. Definitely that Leeching Leer is a little bit better for stats than the um, Vamp Scepter. Mm -hmm. Patrick Star going for the uh, parry again, but you can see that Asian Boy is close to getting the better of these trades. But also another thing to point out, Asian Boy has taken the Fleet Footwork instead of Conqueror, which you normally see on a Akali. And uh, with these extended fights, that Conqueror is definitely going to pay dividends mm -hmm. for the Fiora. So Asian Boy needs to end these fights quickly if he decides to take them. Exactly, because Fleet Footwork is like only a little bit of health gain once in a while. Yeah. Whereas Conqueror, it's sustained damage. Like if you have 12 stacks, you're gaining so much health as it is. Absolutely. So yeah, you know, the Conqueror could have benefited there, but Asian Boy, making it work. Fleet Footwork does mitigate the lack of flash maybe a little bit. Mm -hmm. Watch out for the Mundo gank. It's not that much of a problem in terms of CC. Ooh, actually, this Black Shield doesn't go down soon enough, and 3210 might be looking for this kill. Hits the Q, gets stunned under the tower. Does he go down? The Flash, and Lil Junuo gets the kill. Beautiful bait coming in, and Casual holds his nerve, doesn't use the shield, continuing to bait in the Mundo, and 3210 goes down. Yeah, that was an excellent bait by Casual, just to burn. He didn't use the, uh, the binding so early, because he knows that if he's low enough, he can bait out that Mundo Flash and the Ignite to kill off and give Lil you know, the 300 gold that he needed. Fight in the mid lane as well while you describe it. Toxic Lady does end up with the kill, though, with the Ignite ticking down. Cheesy Legends did manage to win the 1v1 at first, but it ended up in a trade there with Mizuya helping out with the final damage. So. Something to think about, yeah, Wukong definitely does have more damage in the early game than Diego, and you can see those plated steel caps picked up, yeah. knowing this comp is mostly AD, so Toxic Lady definitely respecting her lane opponent here, and uh, trades one for one there. Yeah, it was a close fight too, it was just unfortunate Mizuna was there at the right time mm -hmm. for cheesy legends to get that kill off yeah. that to toxic lady on that Viego. But that's exactly the kind of thing Mizuya has been doing all series long, yeah. man. Just absolutely, you know, being in the right place at the right time, like we said before. Great rotations, great map awareness from this jungler. Yeah. Definitely the star player of the team so far mm -hmm. uh, in this series, even though they all have had their moments. And, uh, you know, toxic lady, is still able to maintain a significant CS lead. That's 12, 13, 14 CS. That's worth a kill. That's a kill's worth of gold. And so it's as if Toxic Lady's a kill up here in lane. And yeah. you can see by the items a little bit ahead there as well in that. But uh, the buy timings were a little awkward, and so Cheesy Legend's still doing fine in the uh, item department. Yeah, exactly. And Ash is ahead of the Kai'Sa by at least 10 gold, but Kai'Sa has a kill over the Ash, which is unfortunate, but it's. The kills do matter, yep. but also CS does matter too. Yep, exactly. And yeah, pretty much equal with that CS lead. Noon Quiver bought up by both bot laners. The uh, Berserker's Greaves, pretty common early buy for Ash, benefiting so much from that. Oh, here comes Mizuya trying to get the burst and finds it. 3-2-1-0 goes down, and that Kha'Zix is getting dangerous. We, we are starting to see why Mizuya's Kha'Zix has been banned out the last two games because... That is very deadly. The fact that Kha'Zix can one-shot a Dr. Mundo, uh, I'd be pretty worried. Yeah, because like, well, right now, Mundo is really weak, so it makes sense how you can burst it. But if Mizuna keeps the pressure on this Mundo, mm -hmm. it's going to be an uphill climb that JH runs cannot beat. Yeah, well, it's very frustrating to play against a Mundo who gets ahead. It's very frustrating to play Dr. Mundo if you don't get rolling because you just feel like I've got no crowd control, I've got no damage, all I can do is run around and sort of tank, tank them, but uh, if that's all you can do, you're not contributing that much to a team. So hopefully 3-2-1-0 can continue to catch up and make some plays. Minuo looking for something down in the bot lane. Doesn't quite manage to find it though. And, uh, for me, uh, my, I think we should be back soon. There we go. My screen was frozen for a moment. But oh, yeah, it's all good now. And a 2,000 gold lead here. Uh, so this, they're, they're on track, Glenlon, with this very unusual, very aggressive composition. Yep. But they need to keep the pressure on, just like you said. Uh, if they let up at all, this superior team composition, honestly, is going to take them out. And look at this. The Jax Jabs finding it, and the stun comes out from the bush. Alien finding the opportunities. Here's Masuya to try to pull the cleanup. Jax Jabs. 
has the flash available. Mizuya goes for the jump, gets a lot of damage, and the kill goes down, but Mizuya might be caught out. Uses the ultimate. Will Alien go down as well? Not quite. Mizuya flashes in, double kill, and goes down, but Mizuya get, makes the most out of that one. It ends up in an extended two for two trade, but wow, Mizuya is doing so much damage on this Kha'Zix. Yeah, Kha'Zix, I think Mizuya just feels super comfortable with this Kha'Zix. He got banned out. He's like, all right, you're banning my Lee Sin? I'll take the Kha'Zix instead. Yeah, knows exactly what to do with that champion. Toxic Lady's now trying to go for the fight, but Cheesy Legends has gone for the ultimate. Toxic Lazy finishes off. 3 2 one, zero there, and the double kill with the ult reset. Toxic Lady is starting to come online here, and the Wukong soul is being used. The ultimate's gonna come through, but there we go. Flash away from Patrick Star. That's just a teleport wasted for Patrick Star, unfortunately, with the flash wasted as well. Unless if they can pull off a Miracle Steal here, Quinlon is just fully and truly in control right now of this game. This is going to be their first dragon, but with all these kills that have gone down as well. You know, oh, the ultimate goes for it. Kind of close from Alien, but good job to get the smite from Mizuya. Eight to three in kills, 3,000 gold ahead. Yeah, exactly. So, like, Quinlon has the lead right now, but they can't say, oh, we're, we're in the lead right now. Mm -hmm. Let's just, just joke around. Yep. Because of this Mundo and the tankiness of the JH Brun team. Yep. Yes, you have the lead. Yes, you have the kills. Yes, you have the money. But if you let them carry out this game, you will lose the uphill battle. Yeah, you cannot let up for a second here. Patrick Star doing well to keep up in farm with Asian Boy, but still you know, not able to duel him just yet. We'll see what happens in that top lane when they meet again here. Neither one up to their item yet. Fiora looks like Patrick is going for a Blade of the Ruined King, interestingly enough, even against a, you know, no tanks. Uh, I'm not sure that's what I would recommend, but definitely it is a, still a good item on Fiora with the, uh, with the movement speed buff as well. So, let's see how that pans out. And we'll see if anybody looks for the Rift Herald here. It hasn't been prioritized that much by these teams. I haven't seen any plates go down to it, so... More, more focused on dragons, these two teams. Yeah, like, plates is, like, plates is, like, it gives you 160 gold per plate, which is a, a great amount, and we see a fight, and Mizuya just gets another kill on 3 2 one, zero. Oh, man, I'm a little bit behind, but I do see Mizuya now getting a kill. I'll just make sure I'm caught up here <laughs> to the, uh the rest of the game. You seem to be a little behind my bad folks. But we are back. I'm at about 15.09. Is that where you're at as well on the clock? 15.13. Uh, okay, good. We are, we are now lined up again. I'm not sure how I got behind my mistake, but we are, we did see that kill. Yeah, Mizuya continuing to find those picks here. 3 2 one zero even blew the flash. And nothing there, so nice work by Mizuya. Four to one here on the Kha'Zix. And so, so powerful right now on that champion. So that's going to be... Oh, here comes the ultimate out, and this is the benefit of this bot lane. Really, really easy engage, but Junuo is coming right back in. There is Casual finding the stun with the ultimate on both champions, and Junuo gets the double kill. Toxic Lady also took down Cheesy Legends in the mid lane, and they are so far ahead right now. If there was anything, any way you wanted this game to go with a composition like this, this is how you wanted it. Asian Boy sneaks one through and finds the kill on Patrick Star as well. 13 to 3 in kills, and this is uh, Glenlon's game to lose right now. They are doing so well here. Yeah, this is like the jungle presence, and like everyone's winning their lane, which is a, you do not want to see in a solo speed game. Absolutely. 3 2 1 0 might get taken down here through the ultimate. Q coming in, Mizuya. Oh no, don't do it to him, my man. That is just insult to injury there. As yeah, Dr. Mundo with the turbo chem tank completed just cannot find purchase on this game at all. And it is going from bad to worse. It looks like even with an unfortunate situation in the first game, Glenlon are so in control of this series right now. Yeah, it's like everyone's fed on the. Yeah. Glenlon team. It's such a hard, but you can't beat Glenlon. You can't. Jane Bruns cannot give up on this. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, they have the chance here. They have, you know, the superior team fight if they get it all together. And they have that engage. You've seen Jax Jabs and Alien do some interesting and, you know, useful stuff in the bot lane. But right now, it just feels like they might be too far ahead. They really need to pick their battles here and mm -hmm. find those engagements, find that crowd control early on. And they have to watch out for Mizuya. Look at this. They're wandering into lane. And if Mizuya catches them out, this is going to be it. Pop by Ward, Mizuya goes in, look at the burst! Alien is so, so low. The ultimate comes in and actually Mizuya flashes into it, finds the kill, but will he be able to get out in time? The team he gets been, away, he's invisible, trying to get away there. We go up to the top lane as well because there's a 1v1, and that is going to be Asian Boy finding the kill there while the others get away. Beautiful work by Asian Boy, and yeah, Mizuya was a good ultimate coming in from Jax Jabs, but it just feels like they're too far ahead. Yeah, the Kha'Zix is like such a threat, like even one, you saw that damage, just one yeah. QW, oh, and the Lux was already dead with a little bit of shield left. Yeah, we talked about paying the QSS tax last, last game, now it's time to pay the stopwatch tax, because that's what you need to bait that Kha'Zix in and try to get something going here. Mm -hmm. it just feels like it's going to snowball further and further away from them. Lux Ultimate comes in, that was very close, but still didn't manage to get it and doing a lot for this team, but it doesn't feel like he can do quite enough. Yeah, there's such a huge threat. Like, three lanes are fed. Well, we could say bot lane's fed as well, but it's such a scary thing to see three assassins, if you are the Ash and the Lux, fed out of their minds. Absolutely. Ash and Lux. We're struggling to continue getting back into this game, and we almost have a 10,000 gold lead, Mark. It's just so, so tough. Here comes Junuo coming in on Alien, and that is it. One Dark Binding, and you're dead. <laughs> Junuo reacting fast, finishing off that kill, and looks like they're going to get this turret as well. All three outer turrets have been broken now. Yeah. So now, if you're uh, Glenlon, you're going to put deep wards in just to get off picks, because you are an assassin type of team. Mm -hmm. You want to get those picks off super, super easily. Yeah, if you got deep wards in the jungle, Asian Boy can get that teleport in, try to find those picks, try to find the flanks there. And Asian Boy can pretty much solo their entire team right now, mm -hmm. as can Diego and potentially even Mizuya. So dire straits indeed as we crest the 9,000 gold lead mark here on the side of Glenlon. 3-2-1-0, just trying to scrounge together some camps. But look at this, Mizuya's even getting him on that. Oh no, it's just painful to see Mizuya just dominating everybody on the map right now. Yeah, it's Mizuya like has like such a huge advantage on Zero. Yeah. He's level 12 to Mizuya, uh, Zero's level 9. That is very unfortunate to see. Yeah. But oh, Asian Boy is level 14, which is an insane power spike. Mm -hmm to Patrick oh. Star's level 12. Mizuya going in, gets the kill. Will he get punished here? Yes, he will. A thousand gold shutdown for Cheesy, but Toxic Lady takes it right back. Takes out the Wukong. So they get something, but man, it just, even with a big shutdown, it just doesn't feel like enough. We'll see if Cheesy Legends is able to make something and you know, get something with the gold he just earned there, but man, it, it's, you know, I, I, I don't want to give him too much hope. It just doesn't feel... Like, there's a, much of a way back into this one. Yeah, Viego, uh, Fe Viego is a scary Viego. Jax Jabs flashing in. Oh my god, amazing play coming in from Jax Jabs. Casual uses the stopwatch. Will they be able to get the kill? Great flash by Casual. And Toxic Lady's here to clean it up. 3 2 one zero is here, but not a lot of damage on this Viego, remember. I love that play from Jax Jabs. And, but once again, man, it just does not feel like anything they do is going to make a difference. Jax Jabs with a beautiful expression of skill there with the flash over the Dark Binding and able to get that kill on the Kai'Sa. But you know, the other player is still just so dangerous. Yeah, like if you get a kill, it, it, it doesn't make a huge difference because Toxic Lady was there. Yep. But it does help out the Jax Jabs to try and catch up to yeah. this Kai'Sa. Yeah, and there's another 1,000 gold shutdown available if they've managed to finish off Toxic Lady here as well as 950 if they take out uh, Asian Boy. So that's going to be what they're aiming for. Try to get these shutdowns. Try to pull this game out of the jaws of defeat. Remember, this is a best of three, and we're in the third game. So the winner takes all here between Glenlon and J.H. Bruns. And right now, J.H. Bruns 
uh, have one of the hardest uh, games of their life to play through right now, trying to come back from a huge deficit. Yeah, if you're a DH Bonds, you try and power through this. It doesn't matter what you do, but you can make a huge difference. One kill can make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Definitely true. But one kill might make a huge difference here. Jack Stabs just accepting his fate at this point. Junuo took a bunch of damage there. They're just not quite able to lock him down. And looks like yeah, Jack Stabs obviously isn't alive to use that ultimate here, so the arrow, enchanted crystal arrow, isn't coming anytime soon. Mm -hmm. And they just need that for the engage. Cheesy Legends, he goes in and tries to use the ultimate, he probably just gets bursted down. They need that Ash ultimate to pick somebody off here. Mm -hmm. That's what they have to be looking for with a 13,000 gold lead in favor of Glen Lawn. They're, they're trying to get this bomb to as well, which is ideally for what Jay Glenlaw wants to do. Get, get more judges, just ice him out. Oh no. Zero almost went down to the Morgana damage over time there. Look at that, had to pop the ultimate. Morgana does have the living orb, which is going to shred through this window, yeah. which is going to hurt. Yeah, that heal reduction is really all they need, and of course that Morgana has built the Ludens as well, so the burst damage is coming through. And you can see Casual keeps sneaking through those Dark Bindings, keeps keeping that Mundo down, and 2-1-0 with the ultimate already used is so, so, you know, useless in this ensuing fight. Dragon's been taken, and oh man, this is tough because it's an infernal soul available. And if they get that on this team, yeah. on this team, the game is over if they get that infernal soul, and I'm pretty sure it's over already. Yeah, it's just because like they have so much, they're so scary and so fed. If they get an infernal soul, they, I feel like um, Mizuya can just one Q and Alien would be dead. Yeah, absolutely here. Look at that. There's the binding coming through, but yeah, it's just, it's, you know, the, any mistake and the game is over for, uh, for J.H. Bruns. They just have no room to play with here right now. And everything has slowed down. Everyone is sort of regrouping and waiting for their chance. That actually probably does benefit J.H. Bruns with the small chance they have. The longer this game extends, the more chance they have to catch up, use these waves to farm up and try to get something here. Zuya, does he decide to go in? Patrick Star's a little bit low, easily would die to a Q, but Zuya not going to risk it. Toxically is just farming up everything from the enemy jungler right now as well. Alien's trying to like at least protect the wave, but if she goes fight, Talks to lady. It's going to be over. Yeah, exactly. Eight and one on that Diego Immortal Shield Bow, as well as the Blade of the Ruin King completed there. So much healing going to be coming in from that Diego, in addition to the innate healing that Champion has. So, yeah, look at this. The turret oh, goes down to the last hit. Very close, actually. That Ash Ultimate you saw came out. Casual also got hit by the Lux Ultimate, so. But you can see with the Black Shield, almost no damage done to Casual there, so. Yeah. Just the Ash Ultimate used to kind of being thrown out into the void a little bit there. Mm -hmm. Toxic Lady and Asian Boy are just like power level link right now. They're, uh, like they're level 15, level 16, and the highest level in days runs is Patrick Star with level 13. But the problem is, Zuno is level 12, so he is power farming as well to Patrick Star. So, most, you can say that Glen Lon has a level advantage to JH Bruns. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's, it's really, really tough for anything to get done here. Maybe just waiting for that Infernal Soul to be completed before they make their final push here. So, one thing that uh, they do have a little bit for JH Bruns is Wave Clear. They are able to kind of keep them off these turrets to a certain extent, though that top inhibitor turret already did go down. There's a stun. Look how tanky Asian Boy is, having built that demonic embrace. And yeah, they are not going to be able to clear this wave. This inhibitor is getting broken. There's the Ash Ultimate, but it hits Asian Boy, and that Akali is basically a tank here. Oh my goodness, Mizuya just erases Jack's jabs from the map. And that is going to result in a five versus four situation. They are they are looking for the Baron pit though. Yeah. They are pinging it. Let's go get Baron yeah. after we get inhib. Headed over there after that, and yeah, there's just no contests coming in. Even Jack's Jabs, the main engage tool, not available. So that Baron's going to go down, and 
Just looks like a slow and methodical push with a huge lead. Wenlon seem poised to take the side of the finals. Baron going down. They are going to be able to use that buff, maybe push through some of these lanes, continue to establish map control, and yep, Glenlon, uh, well, they're pretty much have this one in the bag. Uh, JH Bruns, they need a miracle, man. They, that's all. That's all that you can hope for is uh, just a some sort of huge throw or uh, uh, some sort of miracle team fight. Pick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just so so difficult to figure this one out. Without Glenlon, is just going to put the icing on the cake, trying to contest for this Inferno Soul. But if you're a JH Bruns, you have to fight this for the Dragon Pit because that is Soul and that is, will be the game. Exactly, even with the Baron going, they can do a split push and just try to bait them into a fight because one fight ends this game as well in favor of Glenlon. You can see they're still having to clear out. Dragon's up in 20 seconds and they're nowhere near in position. I just think they are, they're trying to give this one up. So. Very tough, look at this. They're finding Jax Jabs again. The poor guy just cannot catch a break against these picks here. All, so many assassins, and actually Casual goes down. Here comes Asian Boy coming in on a rampage here, and will he get taken down so low, but not quite dying there? Easy Legends did all he could. Look at the HP left. But the dragon goes down. So, so tough here now. <laughs> They're trying what they can, but it was a two for one down in the bot lane, so even that isn't going to benefit them. Yeah, like with that Dragon Soul, it's pretty much like Kali is going to one shot anyone on yep, the team. Exactly. Plus, with Asian Boy on that Kali, it's going to, it's going to, again, burst down that Mundo, even though Mundo is a tank. Yeah. Asian Boy, you want to go one, in on this? Not quite. One W, one W from the Kali did that much health, like yeah. almost a quarter oh, of health. Man, that's Patrick brutal. Star. Going to a, yeah, look at that. It, it's Patrick Star is just. Cossacks isn't supposed to be a poke champion, man. <laughs> oh, and there it goes the There line. he goes, and Bailey in 516. I can't even see him before he finds that kill. So the Lux goes down. Easy Legends is the next to fall. Double kill from Mizuya. How much more can he find? Asian Boy takes out the tank. Folks, oh my this God. is going to do it. Oh, Mizuya finding more. Finally gets shut down. And the Nexus is the one that falls. Shutdown coming through, and they are just going to steamroll on through to this base. That is going to be Glenlon finishing this one off up against J.H. Bruns. I believe my screen froze, and I think that's because of a spectator bug from a surrender, which uh, uh, almost certainly means that it is Glenlon winning this game up against... J.H. Bruns, and that means Glenlon are your Side B Spring Invitational 2021 champions for the Manitoba High School Esports Association. Yeah, that was a well played by Glenlon. They came back from a DC. That was an unfortunate DC, but once they switched off, they were steamrolling from the jungle to the mid lane and yeah. through the top lane. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, you know, it, it, was, it was Glenlon from top to bottom in this game. And, yeah, you know, if you're going to go with that confident of a draft, you definitely do need to play these lanes well, and that's exactly what they did. If I had to give an MVP for this uh, for this this series, you know, th there's some good candidates there. Toxic Lady definitely did an amazing job, but you got to give it to Mizuya, right? Just so so amazing in all the games, incredible <laughs> positioning and like the pathing, the clear. Uh, Mizuya just just carried this team. Yeah, Mizuya was such a big presence. Like that's what I'm saying. If you have a good jungler, you can win games. Yep. It's such a big difference in the, how a good jungler can do. Yeah. But props to Zero, though, in yeah. the first game. Yeah. He played well as a poppy, but unfortunately, once Glenlon got their stride in, in the second and the third game, it was unfortunate for them. Yeah, exactly. So that is going to be it. Glenlon are your side B champions. Beautiful work by them. Great game to both teams, and you love to see it go to uh, all three games. Now, uh, we are going to go over to the side A uh, finals, which is going to be Windsor Park up against Kildonan East, but we're going to quickly switch over the stream, so just head over to lrsd.tv and make sure you're staying updated on that. We will go offline here, and then we will be right back with the side A finals, so don't go anywhere.